The following is a presentation of iRacing.com Motorsport Simulations on LSR TV, the voice of sim racing. About this. Live tonight from the Concord Speedway, LSR TV, happy with you to say good evening, Sim Racing fans, and welcome to our continuing coverage of the 2017 Championship Esports Association's Cars Esport Tour. Live tonight as we head into week number 10 of action. We're happy that you're back with us on a Wednesday evening at LSR TV and iRacy Live. Top side, as always, myself, Evan Pasoko, alongside with Austin Coop and James Pike, calling all of the action and down. Downstairs is our producer, Cisco Scaramuza, twisted and tweaking the dials that are bringing us to you this evening. And Coop, it's fun to have the Cars Esport Tour back with us. Only time this season that they have been off for back-to-back -back weeks. And we bring ourselves right back into a championship picture for the third to last race week of the season. Yeah, we don't have very many uh, very many races left in this season. They've got uh, Concord tonight, and then that's going to be quite a while before we get to Myrtle Beach. It'll be on the 20th, and then we'll uh, round out the season in South Boston. So 125 laps, and we'll have um, you know the Myrtle Beach race, of course. So it's going to be a big race, so there'll be more on that later on. But um, some really uh, a lot shorter tracks than uh, you know than what we're used to. We were we did go to Martinsville. Uh, this will be the second time we're going to Concord this year too. So um, that'll be really cool to see how these guys uh, go from that. Uh, Matt Cucker won the uh, more or less exhibition match, uh, and then Christian Peterson, as he's won so many races so far this season. If you count them up, it comes up to a total of seven races in a row for the Super Late Models, which they're going to be on deck first. And you could look at tonight in two different ways. Either he's going to have two different opportunities to get more wins or two more opportunities for that streak to be broken because as we return to this series here for the second time on the season, as Coop noted, Pike from Concord, only track that we're going to see things double up at all season, we've got twin 75 lappers. So this is going to be, I think, by the end of the night, the longest night of racing we will see all season long. Each group of drivers, both the late model stocks and the super late models, is going to have have an opportunity to go out twice for two 75 lap events first time we've seen that this season as well i think the way you approach this mentally could be very interesting i suspect that it's going to make some of these drivers get up on the wheel a little bit more and go because you don't have as much time to make things happen and uh, then you also may have the mental fatigue especially for the drivers who might be competing in all four races once we get to race three race four you know Maybe because that little extra break time we'll have between races, they might be a little bit more worn out than they normally are. But there's the flip side to it, too, where uh, when you feel like the races aren't as long, that ends up almost energizing you mentally and making you more refreshed, making you a little bit more reactive, aggressive, whatever adjectives you want to throw in there that would actually help a driver find his way to the front of the field. Um, how you approach this race will be very, very key, I think. And we'll have an opportunity to chat about those championship standings and such as this night continues to go on. The drivers just wrap it up uh, their warm-up session and cars are sitting on the pit lane getting set to go racing for the first of these events. The Super Lates are on track, so let's focus on the Super Late models first. And that ties right back in, Austin, with what you were talking about. We saw Matt Cucker, Jeremy Adams, and Christian Peterson win the first three races in this series, respectively. At that point, looked like it was going to be a down-to-the-wire championship. Since then though peterson has won a total seven races a row he's fastest in the warm-up session right here tonight and again you might look at two races as two different opportunities for somebody to beat him or i think that
the driver of the 23 is looking at this as well that's two more races that I can come in here and walk all over these guys with he comes into tonight again three races to go if you include this evening with a 34 point advantage over Matt Cucker who is second in the Super Late Model Tour Championship standings and then it starts to get out of reach to the likes of Adams in third 66 back 86 back for Alenta 96 back for Scott Austin a little bit too far back to strike second and first is quite the distance not impossible to make up though yeah these guys are pretty spread out as you're seeing you know they've uh christian peterson and matt cucker haven't missed a lot this season and and that's a that's a pretty big feat as well they've both ran a total of 1125 laps together uh, and a lot of times they've been one two uh, now in the regulate model series it's been a little bit different but in the supers I and mean, they've been there every single step of the way um one in front of the other sometimes and uh, this the the competitiveness between those two guys and the rest of the field as well with this race in particular just shows i think with that statistic that they haven't missed a single lap and they're both at the top of the board uh, but like you said a lot of points are right there and um 34 points a lot uh, especially since i think the biggest field we've had in the supers is 19 um so that could all uh, i mean if he gets a good finish this race the next race he could you know lock up the championship next week or next time when we come back and obviously that's best case scenario and that's exactly what Christian Peterson would like to do. Everybody else is going to have to try to figure some way Pike to get up and around this guy, but if they haven't been successful in the last six weeks what makes it think that maybe they'll be able to get it done this week instead? I think the extra experience that you have at Concord since we've already been here this year you know what your setup kind of works like, doesn't work like uh, you've got a little bit more time here than somewhere else, so you got the chance to tweak things, make your car a little bit better. And uh, don't forget, there's also the bounty on hand, too. And uh, I'd like to think that everybody's a little bit extra motivated, or extra, more motivated, I suppose, rather, uh, by the extra cold, hard cash that could come down if you beat these guys. We're getting things kicked off for the Super Late Models this evening, and we have four races total coming at you on LSR TV and iRacing Live. Let's get tonight started and head tracks on and take a look at your LSR TV starting grid for round number 10. And what is the 10th points race on the Super Late Model season? Matt Cucker going to start this one on pole position. That is a first step in the right direction for the driver of the 69. Christian Peterson, not far behind, will roll from second tonight on the outside of row number one. Jeremy Adams, another winner of these cars earlier this season, as noted. He'll be to the inside of row two, starting in third. Scott Austin going to accompany him on that row in fourth position. Just behind them, Tanner Cook rounds out your top five. Yeah, Tanner Cook coming off a uh, long uh, streak of actually winning his local track, so team in fifth place. Mikey Norelli, he'll start in the sixth place position. John Alette will start seventh. Robbie Bunden, he will finish, or he'll start in the eighth position. Cody McCauley starts ninth, and Kyle Barnes, he's going to run the super late model race, and he'll start from tenth. Kyle Leverall will start in the 11th position this evening, followed by the 93 of Kyle Young, who starts 12th. John Lyde will begin tonight from 13th. Then it's Brandon Wilkinson, Johnny Dressler, and Jacob Porter starting 14th, 15th, and 16th to round out the field. Look top to bottom at your LSR TV starting grid. We've had an opportunity already this season, as noted, to talk about this Concord Speedway. We were here just a couple of weeks ago. Matt Cucker took a win in the late model stocks. We'll get to those a little bit later on this evening. But it was Christian Peterson who won in these cars at this racetrack on this seventh race on the season. He sits to the outside of the front row as we get doubled up and get set to go racing from the world's fastest half-mile trioval as we return to the Concord Speedway for the the third to last week of Cars Esport Tour competition in 2017. As always, we're happy that you're hanging out with us at LSR TV and our racing live. Pace car down and in. American at the all. Green flag flies and we are racing from Concord once more. Side by side challenge for the race lead right off the bat with Cocker on the inside of the racetrack and Peterson will fall to second down the back. Yeah, those first two side by side for the first corner and then out of turn three, they do get a little uh, get straightened out. And then Scott Austin and Jeremy Adams, they were going at it pretty well there for third. All behind him, just talked about him in the pre-race there for a little bit. He's still in fifth place and they're starting to get single file. It's probably one of the best things that these guys need to do is get single file because uh, getting up there in the bottom or the top is going to weigh your tires down quite a bit. So just about every driver getting single file here on the top bottom. Uh, it looks like in the dog leg right now, there's a lot of action, but right now, it's clear skies. 
Yeah, they're already two by two, pretty deep in a pack. Their race leaders have single file things out and expecting that to be the case tonight as they try to run up and away with things. There was side by side action, eight ninth position last time around. Mikey Dorelli was able to win that fight over Robbie Bunden. That's about three seconds off of the top spot. And now Scott Austin from inside of the top five, really having some issues down in quarter number three, coming to the start and finish line. Lost a lot of time, and it was a very easy pass forward position for Tanner Cook to jump up to four. Yeah, he just didn't have a good run out of the corner there, and it allowed Tanner Cook to get underneath him pretty easily. I saw this last time by Mike Ianarelli had some trouble getting through turn three as well, and now Kyle Leverall drifts up toward the wall. So I almost wonder if these guys might have these cars set up a little bit too tight at the moment, which uh, might get a little bit better as we get through the course of this run. These cars naturally loosen up a little bit as Leverall almost loses it down to four, but a lot of guys here look like they're struggling to get these cars to rotate through the center of the corner. And taking a look deeper back uh, with Porter in the number three position. He continues to drop a couple of spots. Picked up some early, but it falls back a few more. A handful of drivers able to get on around by him. Kyle Young, uh, but also Johnny Dressler. I think somebody don't worry. The 15 machine, he's picked up a couple. He wants some more, though, to the inside of Kyle Everall. That'll be a battle for 10th position. Will actually be two by two and a quarter. Three, a little bit of contact amongst the 47 and the 15. Way up the hill is Leverall not giving up. It's very difficult to stick on that top side in the dog leg 47 lifted and gave up the spot yeah he lifted and then attacked from behind that looks like that's going to be the uh looks like that's kyle young right there who uh definitely hit him pretty good and uh it's a good thing for some of these guys this is a twin because of the fact that that's a lot of front end damage and uh that may hurt you and uh, that's something to think about with these guys it is a twin race so the fact that uh they'll they can really go as hard as they as they want to in a certain way Caution to get to come out, and it is issues with that 47 to Leverall. We were just talking about him at a battle for position. He was on the losing end of that exchange, and he had more issues coming out of turn number three at lap number 10. We'll take a second look at the LSR TV replay. He just got a little bit loose on the quarter, and that car would not snap back Pike, and by the time he was able to regain control of it, he was fishtailing down the front straightaway, looped it around. Good news is, did not end up at the inside or the outside side wall it's pretty close quarters on the front stretch there so that driver does a pretty good job of limiting the damage on this yellow he'll just take the cause caution and drop to the back but thankfully that car remains in one piece a little bit amazing that he didn't end up coming back up towards the outside of the track and running into anybody uh, probably could have happened in many other cases about 90 times out of 100 that's how it works here at concord but uh, yeah, just struggled, I think. I, I saw him get tight more in that first run that I did loose, but that was very clearly a case of him getting loose off of the third and final corner here and just looped it around and somehow, somehow avoided hitting anything else. So he does drop to the back with the EOL penalty. A couple of drivers drop down to the pit lane under caution to find conditions. Robbie Bunden is down there for service. He appears to be the only driver, at least from upside, and the, the top 15 active cars at a racetrack to come down to the pit lane. Brendan Wilkinson was all the way at the back before the yellow came out. After a Bunden to pits and Leverall drops to the back, uh, Wilkinson going to be able to pick up two spots, move the 26 up to 14th position. That's where he started this race, no more than 14 laps ago, and one thing that I was thinking about in regards to how this race was going to play out with such a short race coupe with the twin 75 lap features is would we see a competition caution at any point? Because after 40 laps, we would be right at that 25 lap to go window, closing in actually at 35 to go in this race at that point. At this point, Don, now with 15 laps complete, we can now take that off of the table and know that if it is to go green, it would be uninterrupted to the end should that happen. Yeah, that's something to think about with these guys. They had that opportunity. Now it's uh, more or less gone. And then uh, also got to think about Brandon Wilkerson. He was actually starting on the pit road. Uh, he was uh, supposed to grade on the 14th position, had to start from the pits, and actually got lapped. And so he's going to be back out there. Looks like he does lose those two positions that he uh, looked like he inherited uh, just from going back out there. So since he got the lucky dog, they're going to put him at the back of the line. That's where he'll start, but he'll probably have one of the, some of the freshest tires out there of anybody because he had no one to race. So uh, definitely look for that 26 maybe to do something. A lot of drivers out here, 16 drivers total, and uh, not really many of these guys have really... Uh, had any issues that might change here on lap 16 going to lap 17.
Ace car off and away. We get set to restart. Front row going to be the same as it was the first time around. No changes. One, two, three, four, and five for this restart. Field in the hands of the six down to Cocker. He gets off and away. And we get back racing. A better jump this time around than it did the first time. He'll get clear by the time to head off to quarter number one. Peterson going to hold tight through the dog leg down the back straightaway. Off to quarter number three. It'll be hard for him to maintain the top out of that quarter. Not going to happen. And Cocker clear for P1. So they go to the inside first, second, third, and then you go back to fourth. That's where Scott Austin and Tanner Cook are side by side racing for position. Cook there to the inside of the 05 machine. It looks like Kyle Barnes and that double zero buckshot machine trying to follow suit. Just create the hole and send Austin the back as he might get freight trained here if he can't get down to the bottom quick enough. The objective is to get down in line. Second time this race that the U5 has struggled off for the restart. He was fourth position at the start of this race. Fell back to fifth after getting sunk at the outside in turn three. Got that spot back, but has now re-lost the advantages that he picked back up. And he'll get cleared by the double O of Barnes. He'll get cleared by now the 62 machine of Cody Bacali. And that moves the U5 back to a race low P7. Yeah, and you can see the, the distance between Jeremy Adams, Peterson, and Cucker, uh, the top three, then Tanner Cook, then Cody McCauley, who's making his pass by Kyle Barnes. And I, you have to wonder where uh, that number uh, number 62 came from. I mean, he was really uh, not really in that battle there for that fifth position. And all of a sudden, he came out and grabbed it from those guys. So move McCauley up a few positions and move Barnes down and, and move uh, Scott Austin down a lot more. He gets rid of Kyle Barnes right there. And he's going to be able to save it right there, but that was really close between those guys. But now he's going to get some distance, uh, although he did lose a lot of time. Both those drivers got back to those drivers behind them. And that really does kind of single file folks out in the middle of the field. They were a lot more scrunched up there than they had been up front. There's some contact deeper in the pack for 11th oh. position, actually. Porter and Lade getting together, and now issues in front. 15 machine still coming down to racetrack. Dressler with a big hit caution. Trouble everywhere coming out of turn one. I couldn't even tell where that started because we about five or six guys that got caught up in it. I think, though, the answer might be with Johnny Dressler and John Ouellette and company. I think, I don't know, maybe Dressler had some sort of pedalist or something. He just kind of dove it down into the corner and then came up into Ouellette and they went into the wall and then everybody just kind of came through the dog leg, didn't really have anywhere to go because it's so narrow through there. Yeah, and it's tough to tell. The 15 came up, but I think he left the 81 room. It almost looked like that Ouellette was trying to go to the inside of the 05 because he started to move down off of that wall before the contact was made. I don't know if he saw the 15 there. I don't know if the 15 also thought that he would be in turn to clear as well. And John Ouellette just now came over the radio and confirming that, said that he was trying to go to the inside of the 05 and he will take responsibility for that one. That's the contact that really set everything off thought they would have been okay but the 15 turned into a pinball in one and two and bounced off at least four or five different cars before one of them finally went all the way around yeah there's a lot of beat up cars i don't think any of them are, uh, are gonna have a fatality here but definitely uh, i think we're gonna have see a lost performance from a lot of these drivers uh drivers as cars and i think uh when you look through mikey and our ellie's view of what happened i mean he still got into the 15 didn't have anywhere to go but also the 47 of leverall he saw everything as well and uh with the bad luck he had this will be nice for him um as he goes and gets uh service on his car but yeah a lot of drivers they're down the pit road um, remember they can't take tires but they can go down and get repairs on their machines uh they do risk going a lap down though so as they uh, the pace cars coming by you're going to see some of these guys know they're going to get lapped down here, uh, but that might be worth it to try and get some points later on. Austin on the pit lane, going to drop two laps down. We have the likes of John Lyde, uh, Johnny Dressler now, and Mikey and Arelli, who are one lap down all respectively, which leads us with 12 drivers on the lead lap. And Brandon Wilkinson, just because I was following him along in the last one, this yellow jumps him up to eighth position. That's a race high for him. We'll see if he's going to be able to do something with that. Lights already off at a pace car, pace car down and away. And if he gets set to restart once more, the top three remain unchanged. Tanner Cooks move up to four. Does he make a play for the race lead as we go back underway? Cocker way out in front, car length, good of a jump. 
He got a good jump. Peterson got a good jump. Jeremy Adams got a pretty good run. So it's McCauley now. And I think Barnes there on the outside trying to make something happen. Cook still pinned up there. Barnes now back down to the inside. Cook, I couldn't tell, might have clipped the wall a little bit. So now Barnes is underneath him. And McCauley got a pretty good run out of turn one to try and get around Jeremy Adams. So right there behind Cooker and Peterson, it's really happening in the top five. Where all the action is behind them, a lot going on just a step outside the top five. Kyle Barnes, the double O machine, going to be able to stay in front of Wilkinson, but the 26 has picked up a spot off for the restart. The 93 of Kyle Young is really struggling. A lot of damage on both ends of that race car. The 81 going to go high to get around him. Sobel, the three of Porter. Contact there at a turn number three. They'll keep it two by two. As the 93 just trying to keep it down. Yeah, they've been having a lot of contact the last few laps, those guys, and, and not in particular uh, three and, and a couple other guys, but there's just been a lot. Oh, there goes the three. He almost lost it. He had to save it. That damage must be really hurting the number three of Jacob Porter right now and uh, maybe a lot of other drivers, but yeah, he just about lost it right there in turn number three and want to keep an eye on him just to see if that's going to continue to happen. It doesn't look like the car is handling very well, and yeah, he's going to try and say, yeah, this is going to be a common theme for that three car. Meanwhile, up front, we go side by side for the race lead. Peterson going to make a play to the outside of the racetrack. Cocker going to hold the bottom. He's going to be able to lead at that time at a start-finish line. Good news for him. Quarter exit close to the line. It takes away much of the advantage of the advantage on the top, which is the big run. But Peterson got him. That top lane, especially on the back straight when the dog leg has been very difficult. And the 23 used that to actually complete the pass. And it only took 35 laps. Cocker put up a fight but Christian Peterson looking for eight super late model wins in a row is to the race lead I feel like turn two is really the only quarter on this racetrack where you have some ability to vary up your line and make it work both from the inside and the outside you certainly can't say the same about turn three and I think for the most part you can't say it about turn one either but two you can drive it a few different ways and find ways to keep your momentum rolling and that's exactly what peterson did on the high side was able to get a good enough run to go grab the lead by the time he got to turn three 69's not going to give this one up though cocker's going to stay with him but i think peterson an impressive move on the outside considering people on the top side of the racetrack has not been a fun place to be based on our experiences so far here tonight the top two though are well out in front of everybody else it's 1.3 seconds to get back to jeremy adams hold that thought caution flies once more and it's issues on the front it looks like john lyday got in some contact with a couple of drivers actually it's just the 29 uh, of uh, Mike Inarelli, they got into contact in turn number three, and it uh, just got the front end uh, to come off the ground just a little bit, and then he got tagged once again by the 29. Both those cars lost control, hit the inside wall, and that might be the end of the night for the 22 of Mike or of John Lyde. Yeah, it's a tough break. He was on the inside, and I think he might have pushed up a little bit, too, on that 29 machine, and, and they both got together, and I think Lade was coming for a save, but the 29 was still sideways in front of him, kind of finished him off, and, and that 22 machine immediately opted to take the quick toe back to the pit lane. That would tell me that John Lade feels like this night is done. He's already three laps down just from that incident alone, and he's still going to have to sit in the box, I would think, for a little bit of time based on that virtual toe before before he would be released so i guess even if that car can get fired once more for all intent and purposes his night is done and that caution trickles us down to 12 cars still being scored on the lead lap yeah just not a great night for light been struggling i think with the handling of that car for a good check of the 90 it never really looked like it came underneath him so i have a feeling this is just one of those cases where you get up get off go get a glass of water reset yourself and get ready for the next feature here in our twin night. Light's still on top, but a pace car not quite doubled up and getting set for the next one, but we are past the halfway point in this first feature race on tonight, and coverage of tonight's Cars eSport Tour is brought to you by Joel Real Timing, the official timing software of LSR TV. Whether you spend your time on the sim from behind the wheel on top of the pit box or the spotter stand, Joel Real Timing is your go-to software for iRacing timing and scoring analytics. You can get yourself a basic download or the full Pro version today online by logging on to joel-real-timing.com for more 
information pace car lights remain on once more just trying to scan through to see how this field has really started to shuffle itself up Cody McCauley in that 62. Keep an eye on him. I mentioned to Tanner Cook, the last one who had moved up to from uh, fifth to third position by that restart. McCauley, one of your biggest movers tonight, started ninth. He'll be to the outside of road two. See if the 62 can continue to bring the heat. Yeah, he's been coming through the field really well. I noted it earlier that he was making his way past a few drivers, and if he's able to save himself enough to get towards the front, I assume he might be able to have something for these guys as they'll get another restart. They'll go halfway, uh, they'll be halfway to go in this twin right here. His car drops off and away, 45 complete, going to be 31 laps to go. This so this time by the three and four. What can a man conquer do on the outside of the racetrack? And a race starter can Peterson hold strong low. Green flag flies as we go at it once again. 69 got past on the outside. He knows it's a viable option and he'll stay there. Half a car length battle for the race lead. It'll go all the way to turn three. Still side by side for the race lead here. Peterson down on the bottom, Cooker up top, trying to find a way through the dog leg. They're still side by side, and I think Peterson might have gotten loose. Maybe the 69's presence just up and settled the rear end of that 23 car, but Peterson's ahead by about three quarters of a car length, and he has them clear as they come back across the start finish line. Still not able to make the transition down to Peterson. One last ditch effort can't do it. Matt Cocker gives Peterson a taste of his own medicine outside of the racetrack. The 23 had lane choice, chose the bottom, wasn't able to do it. And Matt Cocker going to go back to the race lead and has an opportunity to run this thing out to the end of it. A car length and a half between first and second position. Be to out for third, fourth, and fifth on back. Coda McCauley picks up another spot on the restart. He's at a race high, P3. Yeah, I'd be interesting, interested to see what this driver can do because of the fact of uh, not only just the dethroning Christian Peterson in the last seven races for these super late models, but uh, these two drivers up front, they can still have the bounty continue on. That 62 is in a prime position. If he can gain, which he is, he can spoil this pretty soon if he can get up there and pass both these drivers. Now, it's something you can't forget. And it looks like maybe Barnes just got shoved out of position by Jeremy Adams. So uh, I don't, I'm not sure if that Kylie that just got real tight in the corner or what, but uh, looks like Jeremy Adams just absolutely squashed him he in the corner. He got the fence. Double O yeah. caught the fence right in front of the 89, and that's what checked him off. But I don't think the 89 meant to get into him. He was tracing him hard into the turn. It looked like Barnes hit the fence and then got tagged by the 89. That cost him in the blink of an eye three spots as he falls down to sixth position and now has to watch Tanner cook it on his six and Jeremy Adams in the 89 fight in front of him for what was his spot in fourth. And he got a little loose off of the corner coming out of turn three as well. So tricky, tricky nights there. Meanwhile, Cook looks like he's able to drive away off the front of the double zero and is still trying to find a way to hunt down Adams, but I think he overdrove three a little bit and backed himself up. So Barnes comes right back into the picture and uh, what we thought might have been a battle over for that fifth position is now on once again. Not going to go away anytime soon. And with the 26 lined up there, Brandon Wilkinson trying to get a part of this. Double O makes a mistake. Barnes slow to turn three. Thought that might have been the opportunity for Wilkinson to bring the truck down forward to the bottom. Did not do it. And it remains a three-way fight for position. Meanwhile, just monitoring the situation up front. Cody McCauley to second position. Race high now as he's able to pass up Christian Peterson. He's marched his way from ninth to second and now has just just a little bit less than 20 laps to go to get that one and final position. Look at a Christian Peterson streak getting ever so closer to getting broken as he's now back in third and really struggling with the handling. Yeah, right out of turn three, he got really sideways, almost sideways, as I like to say in dirt. But yeah, he, he got past and is really trying to make it up. And as that, oh my gosh, that car is absolutely sideways. And uh, he's got he's got a, lot, a long way to go before this is over. About 15 laps here in a couple laps, just still uh, it's over. And Macaulay, he's got a good card. It, we'll have to see in a couple laps see if he's catching Cucker. Cucker has got a good task or an easy task ahead of him if he can just keep his line and keep him behind him. 
That's the objective, is to not look out the back end, just maintain your running position and try to ignore that you got Dakota McCauley chasing you down. Last time by, though, McCauley was a tenth of a second quicker. That time around, the gap going to go from six tenths to five tenths. If he continues at this pace, he'll get there with about seven or eight laps to go left to end this race. It doesn't give him a whole lot of time to set something up pretty, but it puts him in striking distance to at least give him an opportunity. Well, there's a valid question for you, Evan. You don't necessarily need all that much time if you use the bumper, right? Right? I don't Perhaps. think you, you don't even need to be on the guy's bumper to use your bumper. You just got to be within a half a second if you really want to go for it. Exactly. So that's, I think, what we have to watch out for, because I, I don't think there's enough time for McCulley to be able to race around Cooker. It'll have to be a chrome horn of some form, but he's got to have enough time to do that. And now it looks like that lead's kind of holding it half a second. So... Three tenths now continuing to chop down, and I thought that Peterson may be kind of tracking the 62, waiting for the race leaders to find and jump in on this one, but he is really starting to struggle, looking like he's not going to be able to double up at Concord, and Matt Cocker may be the first winner besides Christian Peterson to take home a super late model race since April the 26th, well earlier on in this season. That one came at the Bullring at Las Vegas Motor Speedway and was won by Jeremy Adams. Will we see, though, Cocker get a second win on the year or does Cody McCauley get his first 10 laps to go next time by and he's on him Christian Peterson has uh, fallen down to fourth place but the action is up front we'll have 10 laps to go this time by as they will have to navigate through lap traffic but McCauley is there I think he's gonna be there and he's right there on the on the bumper there I think he'll actually have a chance James uh, just because of the fact that he's caught him so quickly he may still have to use that horn uh, that chrome horn like you talked about but uh, he's he's right there he's got to make uh, one of these moves work and it's it's gonna be in the dog like I think that's where we've seen all those passes at least start Evan and I think he's right in the prime position but where does he go I think there's a couple places the dog leg and maybe the exit but he's getting really close to him at a three here I was going to say, it doesn't look like he has any intentions of sitting around and waiting to the last minute before he decides that the bumper's going to be an option. Took a really hard charge. That time in turn number three, they'll go back off to the final quarter this time. A lot more of a wider arc into the quarter. The 62 really wheeling it, though. You can tell that he's trying to get to that 69, trying to vary his line a little bit. So far, though, Cucker maintaining the pressure in front now. Pulled a little bit that time to three cars. Makes you wonder if McCauley might have burned the tires off of that 62 machine. Seems like a plausible explanation for why the handling has gone away just a little bit. I still think he's got the better car, but does he have the time? 11 drivers scored on the lead lap at his point if a yellow flag were to come out this race would be over with Adams has noted has picked up third to Christian Peterson fallen to fourth it may be worse than that by the time it's over Kyle Barnes is closing on him five seconds off of this battle for the race lead does McCauley have any tricks up his sleeve or is he gonna have to use brute force to get on by great run that time through three to the bumper in turn one not quite yet still tracking and if he didn't hit him, he was awfully close in that corner. And he only a few more laps three this time by. And I think McCauley is just too, his rear end is just too, uh, too much going out there in the, in the end of the corners. He's got to have more of a power off these corners. And I think cucker has got the setup going on the exit of the corners. I don't think McCauley's got it going on the exit. So I think that's going to be the difference here. Although he looks like he's going to get a good run here at a three, two laps to go to the inside and we're gonna go side by side and there's contact McCauley gonna loosen about Cucker out and he will spin caution a flag will fly and the 60 on him at Cucker contact is Peterson and now Wilkinson get into him well 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 Kyle Barnes has got some work to do now because I know that's definitely one that's gonna go to the admins I think it was close enough we'll see what kind of ruling comes down but uh, that that could go either way. It was tight. There was definitely contact, though, so a call's going to have to be made some way, somehow. And you hate to see that the 62 may not win this race because of a penalty. You hate to see Cucker to go around like that. Nonetheless, at a turn number four, the 62 of Cody McCauley is going to cross the start-finish line first. He is your unofficial race winner 
from the Concord Speedway. I would expect, though, and I believe Cody McCauley did come over the radio and take responsibility for that accident. Can't confirm that at the moment until race control lets us know what the official results are going to be. But I believe if you drop the 62 back, then it would be Jeremy Adams next in line. Christian Peterson now kicking himself over losing what would have been third position at the time. And it looks like as Jeremy Adams going to stay out on the racetrack and cycle over to the front straightaway that the 62 and Macaulay will get a penalty. And Jeremy Adams, first time since he won at the Bullring a long time ago. Now a two-time winner in a super late models and an unconventional finish. And that did compromise the bounty in two different ways uh, because of how the the race end went down. So Jeremy Adams still un, unofficial. I mean, I'll, I'll be, I'm I'm sure that will be the official ruling. But and remember, Jeremy Adams is one of those uh, one of those drivers that can continue pushing the bounty to the next week. Um, so either way, no matter where you slice it, uh, if he gets the win, uh, then the bounty will continue to go into the next race. But wasn't it close, guys? That it almost was uh, almost was out of their hands. And it was, and, and like I said, I think that we were looking forward to a good finish. McCauley had a, such a fantastic run, and he did go to the inside. He did make an aggressive move, but hey, it's two laps to go. He pushed up. I think there's no doubt that he caused the accident. He's even the one that admitted it, but I think that we, we like to see great racing like that. I think it's just a shame that neither of those drivers, and congratulations to Jeremy Adams. You know, had a good car, started third, was running in third by the time that we got to two laps to go, and it ends up being a position that's going to win him this race. I think, though, Pike, just disappointing that McCauley, who charged through the field from ninth position and I think was the best car on a consistent basis, not going to win this race. I think that's that might be a testament to his setup more than anything else, and especially when you compare it to the likes of Christian Peterson in particular, I noticed just struggled, especially in the second half of this race. The last 35 laps, he was sideways on corner exit and seemed like everywhere he went. And I think that's another factor that plays into a 75 lap race as opposed to your normal 150. That you don't have as much time and you have the sunlight out on this track. It's a little bit of a weird time for these guys to be racing here at Concourse because you don't really see too many races underneath the late afternoon conditions. And it can make it really, really hard to set up your car for this place to go fast throughout the duration of this race. So... Uh, Macaulay nailed it really well and just about pulled it off, but uh, maybe just got a little bit too aggressive there at the end. Might have had it otherwise, but I guess we'll never know. So let's take a look at top to bottom at what are your unofficial race results tonight for the first of our twin 75 lap super late model features in this Cars Esport Tour round number 10. I get on your screen. It is going to show Cody McCauley up in the first position. He will get a penalty and that'll drop him down to at least 10th position at the end of this race. Again, this is all unofficial, which would provisionally give the win to Jeremy Adams, his second on the season. So then everybody's going to be knocked up one spot for the number that you're seeing. It would be Christian Peterson. Peterson, who's second, Kyle Barnes in third, Kyle Leverault in fourth, and Brandon Wilkinson would round out the top five with Matt Cocker in sixth, Tanner Cook in seventh, Kyle Young in eighth, ninth for John Ouellette, and McCauley would drop all the way down to the back P10. Yeah, then your remaining drivers would be laps down, so they would not be affected by that penalty or would not benefit. And so that'd be Jacob Porter in 11th, Robbie Bund in 12th, Mike Inarelli, he would be 13th, Scott Austin would finish 14th. Johnny D D Dressler would finish in the 15th position, and John Lydae finished the night early 16th. A look at your full race results. Let's head tracks on and chat with the driver of the number 80 Dada Machine, Jeremy Adams, your unofficial Super Late Model winner in this first Super Late Model feature tonight. Jeremy, congratulations on this one. You guys were back in third position at two laps to go. That ends up being the money spot, so I guess I'll ask you about the battle with uh, Christian Peterson for what ended up being the race win. He was really struggling on the long run in this race. And I mean, you guys didn't have the speed that we saw out of the lengths of the 62 and company, but your car looked a little bit more consistent. And tonight that just happens to work out for you. Uh, yeah, I don't feel much like a win. I feel bad for Cooker and Macaulay. One of those two should be the winner, honestly. But uh, uh, I don't know. It's CP's car went away a lot. Mine was going away. I was really junk. I was just kind of trying to baby it to just to get it to third. So I don't know. I just feel really fortunate. 
Coming back to the Concord Speedway, this is the only uh, circumstance all season long into which we're going to make a double up at a racetrack, so second time here. And not only that, but we have two races in each division as well. Did you guys maybe take anything from our first trip here just a couple of weeks ago to be able to work on the cars here tonight? Because despite the fact of having that prior knowledge, as you said, there were a lot of drivers struggling with the set. Uh, no, to be honest with you, we threw everything out the window, didn't touch the last set because we've been kind of struggling looking for speed in other places. So we kind of, all three, uh, me, Matt, and CP, all had something totally different than what we've ever run before. We're just trying something new, and I think Matt's worked pretty good, but me and CP were kind of struggling at the end of the race. I know it's not the fashion in which you would like to get a win in this series. We know that you guys have the ability to do it just straight up, but I know it has to feel good as, as a, some sort of a consolation for you guys because you were the last driver to win a super late model race not named Christian Peterson. It was going to be somebody tonight because he was fourth at the time. It happens to be you to back up a win from what seems like ages ago at the Bullring at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Anyway, to kind of turn this lucky break in this one into a little bit of momentum for you guys going forward not only into the second one but maybe for a strong finish here on the season yeah i hope so i've been running better i've been better running better in the myrtle beach series and i think it, that's kind of bled over to here so i've had a little bit more confidence so hopefully this will help me out a little bit more and we can uh finish stronger i'm going to make some adjustments and be i think we'll be up there in the in the last super race so i think we'll be able to drive for it and not have to get lucked into it well, tonight going to be a lot like uh, those other Wednesday evenings because we have a handful of races still coming up. So we'll let you bail out of here, get set for those next ones. Before we do, Jeremy, any sponsors or shout outs you want to say hi to? Uh, just thank everybody at Team Vince here and uh, Six Man, everybody that helps me. I appreciate everything. Oh, congratulations on this one. A little bit different than how they typically come. A win's a win, and we wish you the best of luck going forward. All right. Thanks, guys. So that is your race winner in our first super late model feature on the night. We've got late model race number one coming up next from the Concord Speedway. We'll take this quick opportunity to step aside and when we come back, race number two on the evening, get set to go green flag. You're watching LSR TV's continuing coverage of the Championship Esports Association's Cars Esport Tour at LSR TV, your home for sim racing and iRacing Live. There are three different paths if you want to call yourself a world champion of sim racing. NASCAR, open wheels, or endurance racing. But no matter which one you take, you can guarantee that the journey will always be tough, which few will ever complete. The iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series, the premier road racing series in sim racing, started with a new car taking center stage. Then, it was Martin Kronke resisting any challenge thrown at him to break the five-year stranglehold of Gregor Hutu as being world champion. These drivers and teams are not just competing for pride, they're competing for money and with over $20,000 in prizes for each of the series up for grabs, drivers really do put it all on the line. The NASCAR Beginner for Series powered by iRacing is the premier NASCAR eSports series featuring the cars and tracks from the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. The 2016 campaign saw a return to the top of the mountain by Ray Alfala as a three-time Oval World Champion. The march to that championship was not easy, though, despite the fact that Ray Alfala took home the most points in series history. It just also happened to be the tightest championship fight we had ever seen. These guys are set for the 2017 campaign. The Blanc Pan GT Series hosts the top GT3 endurance teams in sim racing, with groups of three or more drivers sharing the wheel. This is a championship you can't win alone, and you need the same determination, passion, and drive from your teammates to be successful. 
They often say that it takes just one mistake to lose a championship. And in team racing, it may not be your mistake that costs you the win. Last season, VRS Coanda Simsport won the championship by a single point. This year, who will step up to the plate? Esport World Championships, the pinnacle of sim racing competition. Catch it all season long with live coverage on iRacing.com forward slash live. Welcome back live to the Concord Speedway from Midland, North Carolina, as we roll on in tonight's coverage of the Championship Esports Association of Cars Esport Tour. Coming at you on LSR TV and iRacing Live. It's our only twin feature night on the season, and we got things kicked off with these super late models. The streak has been broken. Christian Peterson, for the first time since April, has not won the super late model feature. He was in a position to win it early on trailed back late and Jeremy Adams ends up walking away with the hardware his second win on the season and we will await the second attempt at the super late models at the moment a couple of drivers going to be looking for redemption in that one but Coop I think that tonight as we head into now our first late model event on the season some of them may not have to wait even that long a couple of familiar faces the likes of Tucker and Adams included also in this series as we transition over to our second division yeah, we're going to get some common faces, we're going to get some new faces, and we're going to get some drivers that haven't raced in quite some time um, that are familiar to this series. And uh, you know, we talked about how Tanner Cook is going to be coming back this week off of uh, real, uh, real racing from his hometown. And then you've got Barnes, he's still coming back as well. And you've got familiar faces, Loveralt, Gillo, uh, you've seen him before, and of course Peterson. And uh, Cucker, I'm sure, will make his way in here. And then the race winner from last uh, the last race, Jeremy Adams, he's going to be back. And tonight's twin night, so we're going to get two of each uh, each series, and it'll be fun. Each race will be 75 laps, and uh, if it's going to be anything like the last one, which was pretty darn exciting, we've got a show for the rest of the night. And I'll, uh, I'll just say that uh, that race last time, I mean, you could definitely see how the track affected these guys and how loose their setups were. I bet they some of these guys made made some last-minute dials. And this series has been a little bit more competitive on the win front than the super late models. Uh, Matt Cocker with uh, four wins in these cars, two wins for Peterson and one for Adams. But the championship standings as we look to those coming into tonight with still three races to go. I guess technically four since we do have two here on the evening to bike. But Cocker leads the championship standings in this late model stock tour. Christian Peterson second is 48 points behind, 52 back for Adams, and then a little bit more of a drop for. 82 back in Aslan, 4th at 97 for Jody Green in 5th position. So 2nd and 3rd, nice and tight, but the race lead is over a race of distance. It's a pretty big lead for Cucker, and then Peterson and Adams are right there for second and third, and Aslan's kind of at his own world in fourth, and then you've got another pretty interesting battle from Jody Green back to Adam Rigo. 97 points to 109, so only a 12-point difference between four drivers, and uh, you know, I think the interesting thing tonight is that we have some guys who haven't run the full season in this series. The Brandon Wilkinsons, the Brandon Cerises, the David Killos, Nicholas Caldwells, and they can come in. And if they run well, they can steal points from some of these guys and shake up the championship picture a little bit. So uh, at least in terms of the point standings, I think that's what I'll be watching for more than anything else, because that could create a few interesting storylines, depending on how this race plays out. And these twin 75 lappers, Coop, not going to be any different than the last time we were here at Concord in regards to the fact that each series is going to run 150 laps total. It's the fact that we split them up that I'm going to be a little bit longer overall, but because each race individually is shorter, I think you see a little bit more of a sense of urgency, and there was a fair bit of contact in the last one, I think, accordingly. Yeah, the sense of urgency is going to be higher than any race that we've seen this season in all four of these races because uh, typically with these guys, uh, since they don't get the pit for tires, uh, they have to do some managing. And I think that's kind of uh, not thrown out the window, although for maybe some of these drivers it was, 
and then they'll have to adjust as the night goes on. Um, but definitely these drivers will have to think about that as uh, as the night rolls on with different uh, track temperatures. It's probably going to cool down as the uh, as the night rolls on, and uh, the track itself will uh, continue to get uh, you know to continue to get uh, more wear on it. I, I do believe each time that they race on it, it'll be a clean slate, but still. Uh, with the different types of cars that are coming on, it'll be two completely different uh, surfaces and uh, changes each time a different car comes on the track. Corners roll off. Let's look top to bottom at your LSR TV starting grid for late model feature race number one. Matt Cocker was slated to start on the pole. He is still trying to get into the session. Not going to happen for him, at least for now. That'll put the three of Jacob Porter to pole position with Brandon Wilkinson behind in second. Christian Peterson was slated to start fourth with Scott Nasland in fifth. Starting six before Cucker's issues was Scott Naslin. Adam Rigo will line up from six. Then Jeremy Adams, Kyle Leverall, David Gillow, and Tanner Cook, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Eleventh is Nicholas Caldwell, and twelfth, Brandon Searcy in the twelfth position, and the thirteenth position, Kyle Young, and the fourteenth starts Robbie Bunnan and Kyle Barnes, who will lead the caboose of the field starting in the fifteenth position. We get sent to go race it with your championship leader parked on the pit lane. And he is not going to make the start of this one. So we were talking about a 48-point championship advantage. Maybe tonight will be the night in which that changes as the 69 has to roll from pit road and the field all of a sudden is in the hands of the 26 and the 3 machine. Green flag flies. Let's go racing. 75 laps on the board. Porter and Wilkinson still side by side. They're bouncing off each other on the first lap. So no love lost immediately between those two drivers. But Porter looks like he'll be able to get down to the bottom, make it happen. And oh, guess who? Christian Peterson just drives it deep into turn three, gets underneath the 26 of Brandon Wilkinson with the 26 back to third and the 23 of CP up to second. Peterson trying to make that charge early, was able to get that spot away. Wilkinson dropping it back to third, as you noted. Single file up inside at the top five, and looks like basically a single file throwing a good portion of the race field. Having a challenge for the lead, though. The 23 wasting no time as that six man machine took a look in turn number two, and the three really struggled that time off of turn three. Thought maybe Peterson would have been within striking distance there, but you can tell that Peterson getting a little bit better bite off of the corner, not good enough to the point where he's been able to get to the inside of the three. But look at that wide arc into the corner, dives low off. He's hoping that that's able to close in, but it's a car length disadvantage. Could also hurt him in the long run as well with, uh, with the way the tires are rolling. And uh, we saw him in the last uh, the last race that he was pretty loose on exit. And um, we'll see how it goes uh, with each of these drivers, just the way they they run. But Porter holding him off. And Porter was pretty excited to get, uh, to get the position over uh, Christian Peterson, and he had a provisional pull at one point, and then uh, I was pretty saddened to, to see that he didn't. But in the end, he did actually start the race first, and it's really helping him out right now as he does have about a two-car length lead over Christian Peterson and then another three or four over the rest of the field. But Peterson is keeping him honest. He's right there. If anything is to happen, Porter just uh, has to be a smooth driver right here, and they're doing two completely different lines here. And they appear, ironically enough, considering all of that, pretty evenly matched. That gap stays about the same. Spinner right in front of your leaders on the inside. It's the 47. Kyle Leverault had issues in that super late model feature earlier. And a self-spin at lap number seven. Going to drop him back. One lap down. No caution. We stay green. Your race leaders were lucky. They were about two more seconds behind that. If they were any further closer, that might have gotten right in front of him. I'm wondering if you might want to tweak the throttle settings if you're lever off because getting in the throttle too quickly has cost him now twice in this night's action. So uh, maybe dial it back just a little bit to make sure you can get out of the corner potentially and maybe tweak the setup a little bit too just to tighten it up on corner exit if you're Mr. Lever off. In the meantime, though, Christian Peterson is really hounding Jacob Porter at the front of this field. It's getting closer every single lap, and you can feel the pressure build on the rear bumper of the three machine. It might not be too long before he makes a little bit of a mistake, and there he goes up to the top side. Didn't get the greatest runs through three, and now Peterson's alongside on the outside and should take the lead on this lap. 
Same place in which he took the race lead earlier tonight in the super late models, but not giving up his Porter. Crossover at a turn number three. Peterson switches it up, goes to the inside, and it gets it. Can Porter repay the favor? Cars a little bit sideways. Can he keep it to the inside? No. Real sideways out of the dog leg, and he will hang on. A valiant effort, courtesy of the three. Christian Peterson just with a better move in turn three, two laps ago. Break early up on the outside of the racetrack set Porter up crossed him up broke his ankles and now runs away into the sunset as the three has to deal with Wilkinson that was a really cool battle to see from these two guys the one guy who's been dominating this entire uh, this entire series and it doesn't matter what car you put him in and then Jacob Porter who's come in mid-season and had a multiple year or I think it was one and a half years of not racing on the iRacing service has really come back and uh, to see that battle between those guys is really cool only bad thing about it is Porter did use his tires at quite a bit and actually slid it quite a bit through both the dog leg and three and Brendan Wilkinson did start to catch up and he also let uh, that leader of Christian Peterson in a way a little bit so um, those were pretty spread out but definitely Peterson had a great run down the uh, down the back and into two and it was a that was a fantastic move and fantastic display of driver driving ability by both those guys sometimes you know you like to see somebody run somebody down over the course of a long run but i think there's always something that's fun about two guys not give it a care in the world who's going on behind them what the distance is just going at it for the race lead and Again, Porter almost got Peters in the back, just got a little bit too loose, wanting that little bit extra, and it got him sideways, and that's what cost him basically all of the eight-tenth of a second disadvantage he has between he and the race leader. Good news is he's been able to stand for the Wilkinson. I'm not sure it's been he pulled it away for the 26 as much as it has, but the Wilkinson not being able to keep pace with him because, again, Porter and Peterson have not grown any closer or further apart from each other between first and second. So now, instead of Wilkinson challenging for second, I think think he's going to have to deal with Jeremy Adams, who's somebody else who's marching through the field. He's gone seventh to fourth, even behind Tim Tanner Cook. Picked up five spots, your biggest mover so far, up to P5. They are all over the back of the 26. Big time battle there for the third position. Adams now going to try and get underneath Wilkinson through two. Didn't quite get the run he needed to make it happen off of turn one. Maybe coming into three, though, he might have something. And as Wilkinson slides up the hill, here comes Adams right on cue underneath the 26 to try and go get the third position. Side by side they go. Ronnie Sis got a front row seat at this one as Wilkinson get a try to do something on the outside. Cannot make it stick. Adams through. Cook through. And just like that, he will fall from third to fifth. At a blink of an eye, Wilkinson gives up two positions. And that's one more in the back pocket for Adams and Cook, who continue to storm through the field. They now have about a second and a half of clean air until they get up to Porter. Next car in line, who's the second off of the race lead. I don't think that Ronnie Six a Cook wants to wait though he's looking at the inside oh. and he will turn jerry adams that was really close between those two going to turn one he made the move to the inside and i i couldn't tell whether he actually had the, the bumper or not but he thought he did and adam thought he wasn't there i think i think it was just uh that was one of those what you would call racing deals and it was a lot later than i expected the contact they were so close for so long and uh it could have been a lot worse for the 90 uh, 96 and uh for both drivers i should just say and uh, could have been a lot worse, and so uh, that just gonna, I think Tanner Cook might have to take the blame on that one, but that was just too close, I think. <laughs> Yeah, the yellow line can be deceiving in this because the 96 definitely comes up off of it and hits the 89, but he does. There's still a half a car length to the inside. But again, you don't hug that yellow line all the way through. That's strictly there to mark cars on and off of the pit lane on when they can merge back up. But the 96 was deadlocked all the way to the left, and I did think that he just barely tagged that car in front of him, and it looks like Tanner Cook is going to receive that end of the longest line penalty. He'll be forced to drop to the back as we pace for the first time so then i suppose that would be the confirmation that you and kyle barnes saw it the same way in that case so coco will head to the back and 
We'll see if he can drive back out through the front of the field. But I, th I think the most interesting thing to me right before that happened and outside of that battle was, and you mentioned it a bit, Evan, right before that yellow flag, that Porter and Peterson, for the most part, were running equal lap times to one another through that run. And that wasn't the case when Porter was at the front of the field. Peterson definitely ran him down. But I wonder if Porter was able to sit behind that 23 car and maybe learned a little bit about the way he's running this racetrack and maybe porter might have gone to class and improved his lap times just a little bit and switched up his line to match up what peterson was doing so now that he's armed with that knowledge in theory will porter be a little bit better on this restart and on this next green flag run i'm curious to see how it plays out the question is will it play out that way and they'll be side by side on the front row too so it would be impossible to think that porter would be able to make a play right off of this restart i think the big thing obviously is that Two of the fastest cars at the racetrack are now dropped back. Adams is going to restart at eighth position. He's got a fair amount of damage on the left side of that car. And then again, Cook, who made the dive to the inside. Relatively okay, besides maybe a little bit of a paint chip on a right front headlight. He is going to be good to go, but he falls way back to 13th. So he had made an impressive charge from 10th to get up there is going to have to make it now with an extra three positions plenty of time to go in this race restart going to come as we come to take lap number 30 but definitely less time than they had before to make it back up front again yeah, and they were really fast i think they were faster than the first two drivers you see right now uh, peterson and porter and i think it's gonna be really difficult for those dead guys to get to the to the field as the pace car makes its dive down we'll get another green flag on the night Peterson's 23 on the inside, Porter's 3 on the outside, who's going to be able to make the run off to turn number 1 and get clear, gone is Peterson, green flag flies and we go at it once again, and it's even going to be a challenge for a second, Wilkinson thinking about P2, can't make it stick to the inside, top 3 single file as they fight for 4th. What a fantastic restart from Christian Peterson to go get the race lead. Porter was able to jump back quickly to second, Wilkinson to third, and oh, big trouble on the front straightaway. One car, two cars upside down. Scott Naslin goes on his roof, and I can't tell who the other one is yet, but huge wreck on the front straightaway to bring out the yellow as Scott Young, Kyle Young, Names are hard, I guess. There's, there's no Young. numbers on the undercarriage of the car, so it is tough to tell who that was. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. But Kyle Young is the other driver who was upside down on the front straightaway in that incident. They both just got up into the fence after it was the driver on the inside and the 33 who got him up a little bit. I think he was pinching at Kyle Young just a little bit. If you watch it, it looks like the Donnie 3 is coming down, but... Kyle Young was not given a lot of space up there on the outside of the racetrack. And once they both hit the wall, those right side tires climbed the concrete barrier. And it was a little bit of a slide on the roof for Young, but really big issues when it comes to Naslin, who got pounded by the 87 and went for a ride in turn number one. Those are not accidents that you typically see at a racetrack where you're barely getting to 110 miles an hour. Yeah, not only that, but two, yeah, two cars going upside down and then Robbie Bundon, his view, uh, if we could get a view of that, it, I mean, he had nowhere to go and hit an upside-down car. It was pretty spectacular and of a wreck, but wow, I mean, that was, that's crazy uh, that we saw not only one, but two cars upside down at a track that you can, I mean, we're seeing them go just just about 100 miles an hour. It's probably about the top, and that that's insane that we would see a wreck like that, and it's really unfortunate for both those drivers. It's a, a big hit. The bad news, if anything, more so for Young is that that car did not come to a rest on the tire. So he obviously had to take the quick toe back to the pit lane for Scott Naslin. He did come to a rest at all four tires. And despite the fact that he's the one who went for the roller coaster ride, he had an engine left in the front end of that race car somehow. So he was able to limp it back to pit road. Kyle Young going to be given the end of the longest line penalty for con causing the contact and therefore being the cause of the caution in that exchange. So bad news for Young. He gets the EOL. He has to take the toe. I mean, Naslin's destroyed his race car. So there's no real major silver lining to that but it could have been worse for him as he was actually able to make it back to the box and can decide to fix that car if possible. If possible being the key phrase, I think, in that, because those cars, uh, it's and it's not even the body damage, but the suspension damage at a place like this. We saw it 
with, I believe it was Nolan Pope in practice in the season opener here at Concord, had to immediately go to a backup when he crashed his car in practice by rolling it upside down, just like Young and Maslin did over in turn three here. So uh, you might not be going Talladega speeds, but you can tear a car up just as well if it's a late model or a super late. And I figure both of those drivers have a long way to go back to actually getting their cars back in this race. Lights back on on top of the pace car. We'll try it once more. Just a handful of laps shy of halfway home in this first late model feature on the night from the Concord Speedway in the Cars Esport Tour. Pace car down, the 23 in control. We will see if he's able to match the restart again last time or if Jacob Porter can get a better read on him. Over the yellow line, and green fly comes back out, but equally is a good jump for your control car. He'll lead to turn one. Looks like top three uncontested once more, and we will fight for fifth position. Adams on the inside, and Rigo topside. You got top three single file, then you've got double file for fifth and sixth, seventh, eighth. And you've got a little cat bird behind them of Nicholas Caldwell. Uh, he hasn't, we haven't seen him hardly all this season, so driver of the number 11 machine started 11th, and he's up to 8th, so he's watching these fights in front of him. They're starting to kind of play themselves out, but looks like the number 3, he's trying the inside line for the lead, not going to quite get there yet, but he's there. He is in a position to be able to fight for it, and that is the key. You just have to be there if you want an opportunity in back of the pack. The 17 to Rico now can oh, drop that spot. Oh, Peterson somehow managed to save that. They're still making contact in turn one. Porter got right underneath him and drove oh. it deeper to the corner, and then he slams Peterson to the wall. And the 69 goes around, and the 89 gets through. Trouble in about four or five places to bring out the yellow again. Cars wrecking everywhere, it seems like, at Concord. It all started with that late and aggressive dive into turn three. Porter clips Peterson, and it was a fantastic save. And then the three just bullying his way through, took to the apron, fenced the 23, and none of those drivers end up wrecking. They're okay. It's big problems behind, as it looks like it was a 69 machine in the middle of the pack of Matt Cucker, who ended up actually getting turned around to bring out the yellow and bring a end to what was a chaotic 15 second exchange from one far end of the racetrack to the other and somehow Brandon Wilkinson takes over the race lead. Yeah, and I'll say that the uh, contact that ensued in turn number four is definitely not going to sit well with the 23 for as much as they have been clean this season, I think uh, they'll make the three the bad guy here in this scenario. And uh, knowing uh, the number three personally, I could say that uh, you know, he different guy when you put the helmet on. He's definitely a fierce competitor when he gets uh, in the sim. So um, definitely look for the 23 and the 30 to, uh, I wouldn't say settle things, but they'll probably have to discuss what happened there because that could have gotten b bad for both of those guys. Um, and that did start the entire scenario there. So I'm sure a conversation is going on right about now about it, and they'll, uh, they'll keep racing. So all of that is really going to shuffle up uh, how the running order up front is going to look. It's going to be Wilkinson to the point, Porter up to second, and Christian Peterson falls to third. If Wilkinson is able to maintain the race lead off for the restart, I would expect the 23 of Peterson to have a very spirited run, James, for that number two position that's occupied by the three, because that's the driver who basically hit him out of the way with force in the corner sent him for a ride and nine times at the 10 somebody hits you that hard in the left rear your car is junked so it's nothing short of a small miracle that peterson's even still out on the racetrack let alone in third really really beat up race car to say the least but we know he's got speed and you don't necessarily need the cleanest of race cars to win here on these short tracks so you just kind of got to make it happen to get up on the wheel and after the way porter got up on the wheel to really get to the front that last green flag run i think we're about to see uh, the hardest racing christian peterson's put up there in a long long time on this next restart Next restart going to come the next time by 45 laps complete, 30 laps to go in late model feature race number one on the evening. And if you thought that one was physical, just wait, because many of the players in that last exchange 
are up front and still battling for the race win does Wilkinson have, but it takes to get away and get his first win of the Cars eSport Tour, or does Christian Peterson return the favor to the three and bully his way back to the position that he feels should be rightfully his? Here we come at a turn three. Green flag flies, and we go back and away. There's the fight for second. Peterson to the inside quickly around the three. Uh, that might have been a, a kind gesture that the three just did there. I think the three could have made could have uh, made a fight for that. So uh, I, I think that's exactly what that was. And the three kind of knows that the 23 is pretty fast up there, too, as he's making the move for the lead right now on the inside. It's kind of hard to make it right there. And he's going to be still on the inside. He's going to be cleared, though. Wilkinson's got a hard charger behind him to the three, the 23. Oh, look, and he's going to give him another shot. Same place. I wouldn't do that if I was the three car, but he's going to do it. Almost gives him more speed going around in turn one. Well, he really likes that late and aggressive dive into the corner. Peterson on the inside of Wilkinson means that he's going to be a little bit slower in front of the three, and you're going to watch the traffic out at the back end as Porter waits and tries to find the way by the roadblock, side by side to the line. That time by four one thousandths advantage to Christian Peterson on the bottom of the racetrack. But Wilkinson, again, searching for a first win in this Carsey Sport Tour. They make contact into the corner, and he will lose it. Peterson clear off of the strike. Clear and one car hard into the outside retaining wall to bring out the yellow again. Might have been Robbie Bunden. I couldn't quite tell. And yes, it was Robbie Bunden in that 87 machine who ends up on the fence. I think he got a little bit of help probably from Jeremy Adams as we have the replay coming up here momentarily. And yep, uh, maybe a little bit of both there. Uh, Bunden kind of came down onto Adams' line, but Adams definitely... Made some contact, too. We'll see how the admins rule it. But Bundy was the one who ended up in the fence and now sits on pit road to get that 87 car fixed up. I think the biggest challenge there is, especially when you're flat-footing it through that dog leg, we've seen a couple of drivers struggling, Coop. If you're Adams, you're looking to the inside. If you're not lifting all that much, if at all, it's really difficult for you to make that corner and then get back down to the inside. So Adams had that wheel all the way to the left, and he was just trying to get it to rotate, trying to get it to rotate, but... Uh, and a little bit of maybe an early move to the inside of Bundin, and there's contact between the two of them. And I'll tell you what, it has been a while since I've seen a car hit the outside of fence that hard. Bundin absolutely obliterated. He'll take a toe to the pit lane, and I would not be surprised if he does not get back out on track. Yeah, I heard someone on the radio comment that maybe his throttles like that, which is why he hit so hard. But I think just the the way it got loose, it wasn't like it was sideways, so he could lock it up, and it wasn't uh, so much forward that he could slow down enough. Enough. So um, I think we've all had those uh, those hits into the outside wall that just makes your eyes hurt because you hit it so hard. But thank goodness it's a sim that way your body doesn't hurt because that one that one might might end the driver's uh, whole entire season with just how damaged a car might be. Um, thank goodness it's a sim, like I just said, but wow, well, we don't see uh, too many uh, big hits like that that destroy the, uh, the in-sim cars like that. It was a very different accident when we saw the two drivers end up on their lid, but it has been quite a devastating night in the late models for a handful of drivers. We still have a, a smidge over 20 laps to go in this thing, and the attrition rate isn't that bad in regards to numbers. Started with 15 drivers and still run with two-thirds of those on the lead lap at the moment as the lights go out on top of the pace car, but a lot of cars out there that are let's just say in less than mint condition for this restart coming up with 21 to go just super torn up stuff peterson's pretty torn up porter's got some damage kilo is clean cook's got damage i mean uh, it's short track racing what do you expect and we are far from over yet. Final 21 laps of this thing probably going to be the most exciting. Could Peterson get out in front, continue to lead this race, or does Brandon Wilkinson have redemption on his mind and try to get it back? Green flag flies as we go green once more. Not a challenge off to one. The 23 is clear. Meanwhile, for third, the three in Porter at a 27 a kilo do battle. Three going to get that spot off to turn number three. Looks like Cook going to dive to the bottom as a 27 really wide off of the turn falls to fit. Yeah, we haven't talked a whole lot about David Kello this season. He looks like he's got the inside a little bit occupied by Matt Cucker there through the dog leg. But 27's kind of been a, a silent guy this season, has had really consistent middle-of-the-pack finishes and 
he's had a couple incidents here and there, and I think every driver's had a little bit of damage this race. I can't, I don't think I see a clean car out there, um, but uh, he's doing a pretty good job. He's just outside the top five now, so he just got passed by Matt Cucker, and Cucker is looking for a little bit of redemption. Oh, Someone contact! Him. Yeah, three, he's got into uh, Brandon Wilkins. Spot. The three, he's getting pretty physical out there. The turn, turn three is where the three likes to go hunting, and he moved the 26 up and out of the way that time, and it was another good save, courtesy of Brandon Wilkinson. You got to think that that's a couple of drivers now that have a nice big red target on the left rear quarter panel of the three. Should they get back to him? Wilkinson going to give up a spot. He'll let the 60 down to Matt Cucker going by, so your pole sitter from earlier on tonight going to jump back up into the number four position. Porter, though, up to P2. Clear to race track in front of him but he's the second off for the race leader in peterson it's a little bit far of a distance to drive to the inside yeah that's the thing now porter might have the clean racetrack ahead of him but he's got to go run down a second and find a way to get to peterson's bumper and he's only got 15 laps left to do it so uh, really time to get up on the wheel we know he's gotten up on the wheel a lot tonight but this is when it really matters because this is for the race win and now that everybody's relatively strung out i think there's a solid chance we go green to the end so Porter's really got to find a way to start getting some speed out of that car now. And he's going to have to find it quickly. Lost a tenth of a second the last time by. The gap now at 1.1 seconds between he and race leader Christian Peterson, who, despite the fact that his race car may not look as nice as Porter's does, ironically enough, considering all the contact that that three machine has been involved in so far tonight, it appears to not be hindering the race leader at all, and he is smooth sailing out in front. Porter not in the clear himself. He's got Tanner Cook in third, and even Matt Cocker now up to fourth position, not all that far out of the rear view mirror behind him in what could be considered a three-way fight. Yeah, and seeing Tanner Cook get closer to Jacob Porter reminds me of the beginning days of this league where these two and, well, myself, Tanner Cook gets the apron. He's going to get a little loose right there, and Cucker's going to see a little bit of blood there with the uh, with the 96, and these guys are faster than Porter. They definitely are. They've only got 10 laps to go, and they come across the start-finish line, so uh, they can't have any uh, mistakes like that anymore. And the three, he's falling off quite a bit, and I'd like to see the fight between the 96 and the three because the three of us, uh, we, we started a long ways ago, and it'll be fun to see a battle between these guys. Curious says that Ani 6 has any reason to be upset with a 3 yet, or if that's not going to happen until he gets up in front of him and gets moved out of the way. We'll see if he uses that as an opportunity. It looks like Porter may be the second fastest car on the racetrack right now because he's starting to open up a gap over Cook and Cucker while at the same time still dropping back a little bit by little bit, lap by lap off of the 23 up in front of the field but this thing's starting to run down now soon going to be at five laps to go and we get to that point a caution flag would end this thing if we were to see one so the 23 just hoping that we stay green for about the next minute and a half will bring us inside of that window as laps continue to wind down I feel like if you're on the radio with peterson it's the same story that every driver loves to hear all clear hit your marks go bring this thing home because he's got so much room now and that gap is increasing lap by lap it's almost two seconds back to the three car now so porter's gonna have to worry about cook and coker and reserve view mirrors peterson just has to make sure he doesn't get loose and bring those three drivers back into the race in order to go grab a win here in this late model feature and he has enough of an advantage with 1.8 seconds that he doesn't really need to force the issue. There is some lap traffic in front of your race leader, though. It's Scott Nasland, 13th at eight laps down. So that's something that you have to keep in mind, no doubt. But a 23 has plenty of time to work as to not have to worry about what is now a side-by-side -side fight. First, second spot, Cook to the inside. It's Porter on the outside. Does it get physical? Donnie Six with an aggressive move. Slides right up in front of Porter. Takes second away. And here comes Cucker. He'll take third. Yeah, I saw that move coming. The fact that the three had to stay up towards the top side, and I don't think he'll be able to use that turn three move anymore. He think he's pretty much used his tires. I've been looking. He's lost a lot of ground on those guys already. Now I think the fight for position is going to be between uh, Cook and Cucker. And uh, Peterson's gone, and these two are really the two closest ones, and we'll have two laps to go at the start-finish line. 
and drop it out of the pit lane is Porter. He's done. He's pulling it off for the racetrack in fourth position. That'll be the end of his night at just two laps to go. Cook still second. He's not in the clear of Matt Cucker and pulls it back up to third. May have an opportunity to fight for just one more spot. But out in front of those guys is Christian Peterson. White flag in the air for the driver of the 23 machine. He needs a big night. He needed to make up points on Cucker. Somehow he'll get a couple, but I think more so redemption from race number one. Christian Peterson, checkered flag. He'll win the late models from Concord. Third win in this division on the year. Strong run for Peterson, and let's not forget that Cooker merely had huge issues because he wasn't even loaded into this race when it took the green flag and was able to drive it all the way up to third and just bring his way through the chaos. So a great win by Peterson, but if you're Cooker, I think after the way the night started, you have to look at it as a solid points night and a good way to continue your drive towards this late model stock championship in the 2017 Cars Esport Tour. 23, burning it down on the front straightaway as your winner, and you'll take a, an extra lap around this Concord Speedway in celebration. Again, you'll make up a couple of points from Cocker, who had to start on pit road, but nothing enough to really make a big dent at what's a 48-point disadvantage into tonight. And Christian Peterson getting a little bit sideways in his celebration. We'll go down trackside where he's parked and chat with him in just a minute. First, as always, let's take a look at the scoring pile and talk about your LSR TV full race results for tonight's first to late model stock feature. Peterson takes home the checkered flag. We'll chat with him momentarily. Tanner Cook is able to pick up second late and Matt Cocker recovers from starting on the pit lane to come home in third position tonight. David Akella with a fourth place result. Great finish for the driver that Number 27 machine and Adam Rigo gets a top five. Brandon Wilkinson, who started on the front row, he'll finish in a sixth position. Nicholas Caldwell, he'll finish in the eighth position. Or sorry, Jeremy Adams will finish in the seventh position. Nicholas Caldwell finishes eighth. Kyle Barnes, he'll finish last car in the lead lap in ninth. Kyle Everall, he finishes in the tenth position. 11th after burning off the tires at the end of the race, after running near the front for a good chunk of it is the three of Jacob Porter. Kyle Young was upside down at one point in this race, as, or in this race, as was Scott Naslin. They finished 12th and 13th. Brandon Searcy comes home 14th. And the last car in the finishing order tonight is Robbie Bunden, some 27 laps down in the 15th position. That's how they came home after 75 laps at our first of two late model stock features on the night. The driver at Victory Lane is Christian Peterson. His third win in these cars on 2017. Christian, congratulations on the win. You started up towards the front in this one and had a couple of spirited battles there with a handful of drivers, including a moment in this race in which you almost got fenced down in turn number three. The car didn't look that pretty, but it got the job done. Yeah, that was a wild one for sure. Um, we got out front early, and I thought we were, you know, going to set sail. The race was actually looking like it was going to go green for a little bit, and then something happened with uh, I think one of my teammates, Scott, and some other somebody else, and caution came out, bunched everybody back up, and uh, the three was racing really hard, and uh, I was trying to give him some room, and he got into my left rear, and then it bunched everybody up, and I got pancaked into the wall a little bit. I think somebody was warping or something, but. I'm not really sure what happened, and then uh, I thought the car was broke from there, but it was uh, it actually turned better than it did before. So it was um, it was a rocket ship, and uh, we just got back to the lead, and and uh, you know didn't look back. We'll have an opportunity to jump back in these cars down the line a little bit later on tonight, but also in those super late models. It looked like you guys, uh, after not able to uh, complete what would have been an eighth consecutive win earlier tonight in those SLM, struggled on the long run. Was there anything that you took over from those cars into this race to be able to be better towards the end of it, or was that just a difference between the two cars? Yeah, not really. The uh, We built a setup for this car, and we knew what we were going to have for this car, but the super... Um, I knew we, we knew we had a little shorter race this week and we, there was two of them. So we built two setups and um, I'm going to run something else here in the other one. And the other one was kind of just a hyper aggressive setup trying to see if we could go super fast or super long and it didn't work out. So um, we're going to go back to what we know and see what we can do.
in this series uh, only one win off uh, for matt cucker's total of four so you guys are definitely still competitive in both ends of things the championship though is quite the spread it looked like tonight might have been the night for you to get up uh, some of those points on the 60 don he started on the pit lane he ends up coming home in third tonight is your focus in these cars on a championship which is starting to get further and further into the realm of possibilities here with only now three races left to go or is just kind of the concern in these things to have some fun and get wins just have fun and get wins and uh, keep the bounty off. You guys have two more races to go. We'll let you get to it. See how that other setup works. And a super late model is coming up. Christian, before we let you do the sponsors and the shout outs, who makes it happen? Uh, just everybody who works on the setup. Jeremy, Matt, uh, everybody over there. Um, LSR TV putting the show on and uh, uh, Championship Esports for everything they do. It's been a lot of fun. Wasn't an easy one in this one, but Christian Peterson is your late model stock winner from Concord tonight. Christian, congratulations as always. Best of luck. Maybe we'll chat again. Thanks, Evan. That's the driver of the number 23 machine. We're halfway tonight from Concord. We've seen both the late models and the late model stocks. The super lates got it kicked off, and they will be coming up next for their second of their twin 75s in just a moment. So as we take this opportunity to step aside, want to remind you to hang tight with us from the Concord Speedway. You're watching LSR TV's coverage of the Championship Esports Association's Cars Esport Tour. At I Racing Live, still a lot of racing coming up. When I was 16 years old, I was working in a Goodyear tire store, and my boss actually built an old dirt car, street stock Monte Carlo. Went with him one night, fell in love with it. It was a hell of a race, hell of a party, and a big fight afterwards. I was like, this is, this is it, this is it for me. It wasn't long after that, I was driving an old 78 Camaro out of the weeds at, at that guy's farm. We pulled that thing out and made a race car out of it, and away we went. You know, I think a driver has more to do with the equation going back and racing dirt, whether it's a modified, a late model. You can do more with the race car. You know, the harder you drive it, a lot of times, the better it goes. You can crawl up on that wheel and feel like you made the difference at the end of the night. Asphalt car, you can't overdrive them. Well, that was the first thing that I had to learn right off the bat is, oh my gosh, I've got to discipline myself, not overdrive this thing, and that's how you get the most out of it. Truth be told, communicating the right information to your crew and, and your crew chief so they can do their job and make their appropriate adjustments for you to go faster and do your job is, is probably 90% of the game in, in our world. I've always loved late models. You know, my dream was to be a late model driver driving for a living across the country like Daryl and, and Don do that drive for me. I mean, that was, truth be told, that was my dream, you know. I always wanted a semi. I always wanted a stacker trailer, two hot rods in it, and let's go race and let's take off with your buddies and go race and, and chase that dream. Never in a million years did I think it would turn into a Cup Series and I actually have an opportunity to own two, um, you know, dirt late model teams. When you think of iRacing, you don't think of a video game. It's it's not. It's a way above and beyond any of that. You know, dirt racing changes so much. The track changes so much. Being able to capture that, to, you know, experience all those details that surround dirt racing and make dirt racing what it is, is what makes iRacing so cool because they did nail all that. I knew when they came to our shop and scanned cars and went to the detail of getting that car right, I knew that it was gonna be over the top because it blew my mind just the work that went into making sure the car itself was legit. This sport has been around a long time. The competition can't be replaced and that's what brings people back to the racetrack week in and week out.
Overwatch crew. Welcome back live to LSR TV's coverage at the Championship Esports Association's Cars Esport Tour on iRacing Live. Most times out, we get one and done for both the late model stocks and the super late models, and we pack it up, but we are only just getting the night started halfway home tonight. Uh, from Midland, North Carolina, we've seen the late model stocks get the night kicked off. Jerry Adams going to victory lane in those, and then just moments ago, Christian Peterson winning the first of the late model stock wins as well going on into this evening so two down two to go and we head back into the cars that got the night kicked off and what was uh, one of the more entertaining races we had seen all season in these super late models they're back on track for their second a twin 75 flat made events and we're happy that you're with us at lsr tv your home for sim racing evan pasoko austin coop james pike upstairs and coop we move into this one now with maybe some lessons learned especially out of the peterson team camp off of that first race yeah, he definitely turned it around from the super late models to the late models, and uh, I think he'll probably be making some tweaks in this race. Uh, th that setup that he had in the last uh, super late model race, I don't think was quite there, and uh, I think uh, a lot of these drivers will probably be making a lot of uh, adjustments to their vehicles, and seeing if they can get as, as much as they can, just a little bit of an edge is going to help them out, uh, and they're going to probably think a little bit more in the long run. A lot of these guys tried to really push it, and it didn't quite work out. They may be a little bit more conservative in this race. Well, they definitely know what to expect, and we thought that that was going to be the case already, having raced at Concord once before. James, not the case. A couple of drivers, including your race winner, uh, noting that they really didn't transfer many notes over. They just kind of started over for this second trip to Concord. So now they, I guess, have a little bit more of a direct notebook to look back on from just a little bit over an hour ago of what happened in that first race. That, but I almost wonder if your level of aggression is the thing that's going to get altered the most because we've seen it from a lot of guys tonight that these shorter races are just making everybody really get after it and go for it more. And that's led to some interesting incidents on track. And I have a feeling that just because we're in a new set of races and back in the SLN, we've had a little uh, LMSC break that anything's going to change. I expect a lot of guys trying to get up on the wheel right from the get go to try and make things happen and just uh, a lot of calamity and chaos here to say the least. In 75 laps, as we've been saying, is not a lot of time at Concord under green. When you do see, though, that level of tenaciousness that we've seen amongst the field so far tonight, you get a couple of gallows, you get a couple of restarts. It does stretch things out a little bit on the stopwatch, but also makes these races a little bit more nail-biting once you see these guys continue to go after it lap after lap. Nonetheless, let's go track on and take a look at the LSR TV starting grid. Good to be Kali is scheduled to start on pole position for this one and we're talking about the strange results from the first super late model race that night it was mccauley who was given a penalty at the end of the last race dropped him back all the way to the tail end of the lead lap that just happened to put him on pole position for this one after being a, the self-claiming of the caution in the last one. So he looks for redemption tonight as he starts from pole. John Ouellette going to join him from second. Kyle Young, Tanner Cook going to make up row two, the third and fourth respectively, with Matt Cucker in fifth. And actually, McCauley will be giving uh, his uh, position away. Uh, so a little bit of a mix-up, but we'll continue to do the order that we've been given. Marin, Brandon Wilkinson will start in the sixth position. Leverall will start in seventh. Kyle Barnes, eighth. Christian Peterson, ninth. And Jeremy Adams, tenth. Well, the inside line will be moved up one. We've got Jacob Porter in 11th. Robbie Bundin, 12th. Mike Gianarelli, 13th. Scott Austin, 14th. And Brad Carpenter, 15th. With the change, though, that will obviously shuffle everybody around a bit. And again, it was the 62 who, if you didn't watch the first one, I highly encourage you to go back, made contact with Matt Cucker for the race lead at two laps to go. Cucker spoke to McCauley, said that he was the cause of the caution. He dropped to the back. This dropping to the back in this race was not a part of that penalty. He has requested to drop to the back after a top 10 invert. So he will start at the back in 15th position. Just wanted to clarify that that is not a part of a carrying over penalty. He has requested to take the end of the longest line of penalty, drop it to to the back so just like that kyle young is going to get thrust into the front row and he'll come off a of turn number four with john allen and he is gone obliterating who on the restart just check it out is kyle young ridiculous restart 
Holy cow, and I think he may have jumped the stars. He's going to slow down for it, but it's creating more of a problem, I think, than it is, you know, it created a little bit of a problem there, and so he's going to have to give up the race lead. John Olette's going to lead that lap, but it definitely combobulates and stacks this field up quite a bit. I was, I was pretty surprised that he, uh, that he slowed down so much, but he did do the right thing, I think, and it looks like, no, oh, wow, car way out of shape. And he's going to be able to keep that thing straight. That's Tanner Cook, I think. And it, it was a fantastic save after he got loose into the corner. He walked it up to the fence. He used every single inch of the racetrack, but was able to keep it on the ground. So we stay green. He's struggling to maintain his running position on the outside of the racetrack. Jacob Porter going to get by him, but he inside slide up in front and take over sixth. And here comes Brandon Wilkinson in the 26, who has had a very good night so far, coming through to take seventh from him. So Tanner Cook falls all the way back to PA. Lowest he's been all night. Could have been a lot worse, though. The car is still at least on track. Side by side. Meanwhile, for second, here comes Cucker on Kyle Young. Cucker completes the pass on Young easily. Now it's up to Kyle Leverall to try and get around the 93 machine, but he didn't get a good run into the corner and backed himself up towards the clutches of Christian Peterson. So now here comes Peterson looking underneath the 47 to try and get the fourth position. Really nice run through the corner there for the number 23. Can't quite stay alongside the 47 through three and even through one. It's it's still everywhere else for the moment, but that probably is going to change because Peterson's been so consistently quick here all throughout the night. And something that we missed when we were looking back at the fight and that fantastic driving of uh, Tanner Cook was that Kyle Young did give up the race lead. I don't know if he was instructed to it. I would assume so. And the only thing that I could think of is that even though he was in the control car position, because he gained that spot by our pole sitter, Macaulay dropping to the back, he was technically scored third. And I believe the control car position may have been given to John Ouellette, which is why you saw Ouellette get blown out of the water. I think the 81 might have been under the impression that he was the one restarting this race at a Kyle Young to avoid a penalty gave that race lead up once he did so Matt Cocker was right there waiting in the wings it was kind of a tough line to walk for him to give up the race lead and get right in on the bumper of the 81 and in doing so allowed Cocker to get to his inside and passed him all in one fellow swoop so that's how Kyle Young goes from being almost the second in front to third and these guys up front are getting pretty close. Looks like Matt Cucker is jump looking on John Olette for the position. He's going to go to the inside. And these guys are getting really stacked up for one of these guys. they got to get going. And it looks like Olette is going to have to. Yeah, he's on the outside. He lost the lead that last time by it. They'll start finish line. And they're two by two for the first four positions. And it's getting pretty stacked up. Peterson's making another position make another pass on John Olette on the bottom. And then look at Leverall. He's also going to be doing the same thing. Looks at like the three thing inside wall. Caution is out for Jacob Porter. Problems in turn number three for the driver of that three. And he was getting a little bit sideways right as this was all going down. So I have to assume that some of that was that Porter lost a lot of speed right in front of Wilkinson and the 26 had nowhere to go. But it was that tap of the 26 at the last moment that finished him off. And a little bit of an extra shot looks like for the 96 of Tanner Cook who also made contact. So that's the uh, issues that, that you assume when you make a mistake at a racetrack. Tanner Cook would have been nowhere near that accident if he hadn't gotten loose the first time around and said he fell to eighth and then got a little bit of damage. He will bring the 96 down to the pit lane, as I assume Porter will as well. That looked almost identical to an incident that happened on Monday night here in the Full Throttle Cup Series, which you can see on LSR TV between Christopher Hurlow and Joseph Tice. Tice got himself a little bit loose in the middle of the corner, and Hurlow didn't really have anywhere to go in that situation. And Hurlow just kind of finished Tice off and finished spinning him around. And that's, I think, exactly what happened between Porter and Wilkinson. Porter got the rear end of that car loose and started the spin, and Wilkinson didn't have enough time to check up or do anything to get out of the way and just kind of drove into him and finished him off. Wasn't intentional, I think, by any means, but just kind of one of those nature of the beast things that happen, especially at that point in this racetrack where everything starts funneling up. And, and that's, I think, part of the problem for Cook, too. The Porter just run around in the worst spot. And if you hit the wall right on the exit of turn three on the inside there, you're going to bounce up back into the racing line and you're almost destined to collect somebody in the process. 
Looks like the uh, the claim for the cotton shit flag is uh, going to come out courtesy of Wilkinson. The 26 is going to take responsibility for that one, and it'll drop him all the way to the back of the end of the longest line. And meanwhile, your race leaders, no real changes going on up towards the top five. It happened a little bit deep enough back that everybody behind Porter is okay, with the exception of Wilkinson, who did decide to take the cause of that one, and race control will give him that EUL penalty. It'll be Conqueror in first, and it will add in second. Peterson third, Young in fourth, and... It looked like as well Adams was scored in fifth. The right the order gonna get a little bit shuffled up that time by the start finish line, but it is in fact Peterson third, Young in fourth, and Adams in the number five spot as we get set to go at it once more. We'll see what the drivers on the front row can do. Can Matt Cucker continue? To get out in front of this one and get around John Ouellette this time around and go for the point. The 81 once again can find himself up on the outside of the racetrack trying to get up on the gas for the race start. Green flag flies and another masterful start for the inside Ouellette struggling on the outside for those. Yeah, and those starts are pretty good. It's almost like they get too much of a run because they get so far out and then all of a sudden they get caught in the dog leg. And I know the first time it was... Uh, I think it was planned, but this time I don't think it was, so uh, interesting to see how much of a good start he had, but maybe it's just Christian Peterson being really fast. He's going to show the inside right here in the dog leg, and he might actually have him right here in the turn three. Wow, he just blew by him just one lap later, and I think maybe Cutter has had a problem or something. I'm unsure, but... He just was easily passed. New leader, Christian Peterson. They made contact coming out of the dog leg, and it loosened up the 69 a little bit, and I think that that only aided how fast Christian Peterson was already before they got into each other, and Peterson rockets to the race lead. Just talked with him, winner at a late model race tonight, but really struggled to the end of the earlier super late model race. Said that we had two different setups, and we wanted to try the more aggressive one in the first race. It did not pay out, and it was his first non-win in a super in a super late model in fact yeah since april so they went back to the other setup the one that they are more confident with and it looks good at lap 22 really really good i love the way that that car is just planted all the way through the corner you barely see that thing twitch at all coming out of corner exit i think it's just a little bit of body roll on corner entry which is gonna happen but that 23 looks really really stable at the front of this field and if you're anybody else behind christian peterson that's a pretty terrifying thought because not only is that car well planted he's starting to run away from everybody else opened up two one hundredths of a second on matt cucker and about the same to john Ouellette. and then a big battle here going on for the fourth spot jeremy adams kyle young kyle barnes there Ooh, a little bit of contact and there they go you get them all stacked oh, up oh. and they all just pile up and there is absolutely no room to go anywhere on this racetrack because they bounced right in front of turn four where the inside wall funnels straight towards the front straight away and there was absolutely nowhere for literally the rest of the field to go Tanner Cook did a handspring over the exit of the restart box that included going over top of the double low and I thought it was going to be Barnes who was the driver that was about to be involved in all of this it happened up a lot more towards the front of the field than our innocent victim ended up being but the 89 is the one that got loose and it was a good save by Jeremy Adams and then I think the double O again had it saved but very similar to the last accident a driver behind just not enough time to react and Scott Austin tagged the double O and it's a right there there's a transition from what looks like a permanent pit road wall to a jersey barrier pit road wall and it sticks out a little bit from where you actually have from going to an apron on the racetrack to that inside wall being right there and just because of where the double O hit it he bounced back up right in front of traffic this not to forget that scott austin did end up spinning but it was spectacular back where the donnie six got airborne yeah that was uh, another uh flip that we've had that's uh, three tonight and i'll tell you that that wouldn't have been possible without courtesy of the number three and he did slow down but man uh, he just blew by three or four drivers that were really slowing down for this wreck and i maybe didn't see it maybe uh just didn't think the wreck was that severe but definitely came in there and the three has had an active night tonight and uh, he's down pit road he might be done for the night as he is two laps down already getting repairs and a lot of these drivers are uh, are very injured and i think those guys up front that maybe aren't up there as much uh maybe that your drivers like leverault i think he may have got a little bit of a piece of that last one um they're gonna be pretty happy about this a couple of different shots including the onboard of the three of porter who was the driver who started way behind that one and he ended up with a face full of the 96 machine that's how quickly things can go awry and 
from some of those very wide helicopter shots it can look like somebody five six seven cars back even in this case have so much time to get on the brakes and then you get the onboard look and you can tell just how quickly all that went down quick turnaround though field already doubled back up and we're going to go back green to complete lap number 29 13 drivers left on the lead lap will tanner cook and jacob porter drop down to the pit lane to try to get those cars service we'll let you know if they get back out on track but up front it is a renewed fight between christian peterson and matt cucker really really good drive away from peterson once again gets ahead of everybody cooker slides into second and then kyle young stuck on the outside and gets way out of the groove there so he'll lose two spots maybe three if leverall can come underneath him and clear him and that i believe will put john and Lent up into the third position adams to fourth and young back to fifth still trying to hang on to that spot as leverall's underneath him but that's side by side there as they come into turn three Battle going to continue all the way through the corner and off the Donnie 3 checked up a little bit. The 47 Leverault will win that spot and here comes Cody McCauley who was scheduled to start on pole position for this one. Took it a while to drop to the back. He's working with front end damage and it appears that it's affecting that car in the slightest. Really loose that time between the short shoot and three and maybe force Leverault a little bit high there. Contact between the two. Everybody going to be okay as Leverault falls to P6 with McCauley picking up the top five spot. Yeah, really close contact between those guys, and I don't know if he got into him or whether he got so close that he maybe spooked the 47, but either way, uh, it was really a close call by the 47, but he's able to still retain sixth place. Sadly, he passed one and got passed by another driver. Oh, Spinner! Driver. Wilkinson got turned. Yeah, I don't know exactly where that is, but that's going to bring out the caution. Turn two, looks like we'll, we'll get the cameras back there for a second look at a minute. We were watching the fight a little bit further up, and I just happened to catch it between the 31 and the 26. And again, this racetrack is a very unique shape. It's they call it's, it's called a half-mile tri-oval, but that typical bend is not on the front straightaway. It's kind of a triangle, kind of an egg shape, something in between the two, and there's a lot of diamond deed off of the corner going high to then dive back down to the next one and i don't think that there was any intention on behalf of the 31 carpenter to squeeze wilkinson he was still trying to rotate off a of one he wasn't able to dive back down into two wilkinson topside was already lining up for it it was very very minor contact but it really upset the donny six and it spun around in a blink it was so weird to watch them make contact. It almost looked like Wilkinson got launched off of the side of one of Carpenter's tires because you don't normally see drivers get airborne here in the middle of a straightaway like that unless there's some sort of tire launching involved. So I think that must have been what happened, that Wilkinson's tire made contact with Carpenter's tire and they went around, and that's about the best I can figure out for this because nothing else to me really makes any sense. Well, we have seen cars on their lid tonight, so the good news for the driver top side of Wilkinson is it does not go all the way up and over, but those backside tires, and you can see it on the second look there, definitely got way up and in the air. Came back down on all four tires. He drives it down to the pit lane, and he's going to bring that number 26 machine back out onto the racetrack. It's been somewhat difficult tonight to track who has had the best cars. Peterson has been there. Uh, obviously, Matt Cocker has been in there, but we've seen Ouellette be fast at points. McCauley be fast at points. Wilkinson, somebody who's led laps so far tonight, and an assorted amount of those drivers have had issues now in this third race on the evening second super late model feature of round number 10 that you have to assume that it just kind of falls back into the hands of the Cocker and Peterson show. None of that at all taking away from the fact that other drivers have been giving it quite an effort here tonight, but they just have not been able to avoid the issues in this second race. Yeah, these guys are going to get double filed here for maybe maybe one of the final restarts of the night. We've got a lot of damaged cars throughout this field, and I'd say that uh, some of these cars are going to be competitive with each other. Some of them aren't, and then you can see some of the some cars are starting to fall off. I know Kyle Everall, he did get damaged on that big wreck on the front straightaway, so he's pretty damaged. And then Wilkinson, he's damaged as well. It's kind of uh, one of those uh, fight to the end kind of races is what it's looking like in this one is only really the first few guys have uh, clean cars as we get another restart, which will be on lap 40. 
It'll come at lap number 40. That'll leave us with 36 laps to go from Concord. Just flash the cross flags point in this SLM feature. Contact to the inside as we go back under green. First time tonight, I think the outside driver's been able to stick with him. Cutter on the outside. It will not let Peterson get away. Does he challenge all the way to turn three? Can't make it stick. He goes for the crossover. Not going to happen. Peterson leads. Just slides right back in line and makes sure to get right back into the racing groove so he can immediately begin chase on the 23. Meanwhile, Jeremy Adams is barely clear of John Olette and Cody McCauley who are racing hard for the fourth position side by side. Still not really a favorite between those two. McCauley will lead at the strike, but they're still alongside one another. And then Olette decides to give it up. So now it's the mountain the top six or seven, maybe eight or nine in contact to the back of the field. Kyle Leverall and Robbie Bunden get into one another and that'll bring out the yellow flag once again. And that's the 27 again, caught up in another incident tonight. A couple of them have been at his own hands, but this one looks like just another race and deal. He tried to get to the inside of the 87, and it was a little bit of a gutsy move to make that, and the 87 was sideways that he kept spinning to the inside, spinning to the inside, and Leverault ended up getting turned around. After uh, all of that had happened, Leverault uh, up on the inside of the racetrack was trying to hang on, and it was Bunded on the outside of the racetrack who just couldn't get off of him after he got loosened up, and 47 got turned, and pretty good kiss to the outside. Fence slows us down just a handful of laps off of another restart. Yeah, with that one, I mean, we'll have about, uh, about four, well, that's about 30 laps to go uh, here after this lap, and these guys have uh, been pretty physical after the after the last couple of cautions last few laps and i'm sure some of these guys that have pretty wrecked cars are gonna be happy to come down pit road and get those things fixed up but ever since the beginning of the last race the the twin these guys have been really at it i think that uh, uh intense is is a word i'd like to use but i just can't find the word that would really de <laughs> describe this as good as i want to but these guys are it's it's an intense uh, intense atmosphere for these last two twins that we've had. And and you obviously are going to have situations like that when you have restart after restart. It's going to be increasingly more difficult with every single passing one to obviously just all of a sudden break out into a long green flag stretch. And we've seen big hits tonight. Hits that we've even noted a, a little bit over the line in what we're used to seeing at a racetrack that is at a half a mile in distance, but at the same time, you're not losing all the cars. Still with 13 drivers on the lead lap means that no more additional real estate's opening up anytime soon. The track's still very much crowded. We went to Concord in 2017 in 1990s. Bristol decided to come out tonight because that's the way most of these races have gone. It's, it's just been very, very aggressive racing throughout the field all night and no room has been given. Uh, and I, I think it, it kind of was a tone that got set early on in that first SLM feature, and now uh, it's just kind of carried on through the rest of the night. We double it up once more. 47 laps now going to be completed. Brings us for the first time tonight with a restart inside of 30 laps to go. And it just takes one of these restarts at every single yellow. Gives Cucker another opportunity. He just needs to do it once, and he's done it already tonight in these cars to get around Peterson on the outside on a restart. Is he able to pull the rabbit out of the hat at lap 47? Great jump in a turn three. Yes, sir. Matt Cucker to the point. Can Peterson stick it out to the inside at a turn number two? He cannot. Now he drives to the inside to three. He's going to be in the inside here, and I think Cucker was able to really time that start. A little bit of contact between those guys off of turn number three. He's going to leave, uh, looks like, Peterson with McCauley on the outside. McCauley, remember, he went to the very back of the field, and uh, now he's all the way up to third and trying to get second place away from Christian Peterson. Maybe he's going to try and redeem himself. He hits the ball. Maybe not. But we got about 15, 25 laps to go. And the 23 needs to get around to 62 of McCauley. We're getting the gang back together from the first SLM race on tonight, but he needed to clear the 62 ASAP. He finally does, but those handful of laps allows Cocker to pull out to a half a second advantage. Is Peterson enough on raw speed to make that up in 25 laps? If we stay green, that's plenty of time to work it down, but every single time we get a caution, that takes a good chunk out of what's left in this in at four or five laps apiece. 
Uh, I'm not worried at this point about whether or not Peterson's going to run out of time to run him down unless he runs the tires off trying to run him down, which is certainly a possibility. You have to at least consider it. But uh, I, I don't think you're worried about that that much if you're Peterson, though the car looks like it might be a little bit tighter now than it was earlier on in this race. But this is all about just making sure that you nail corner, entry corner, exit, and don't necessarily try and overdrive it. As Darrell Walter says, slow down to go fast. The more consistent you try and be, the more your lap times usually start to come down. Just taking a look top to bottom to see if there's any other active fights at a racetrack right now. How about one for fifth position? Kyle Young, just a self-inflicted error. Messed up the run that time at a turn number three. And John Ouellette wasted no time. Sitting about a half a car length back to dive to the inside. So those drivers will exchange those positions. It's about two and a half seconds off for the battle for the race lead. And it's not done yet. Ouellette, Young, and Austin in a three-way battle back here in traffic, though. We'll have to bring the eyes back up front because Christian Peterson is closing the gap. Cue the Jaws music to three tenths of a second at 20 to go. Yeah, I'm sure he made it at least a little bit or a small adjustment between the last twin and this one. He, like you said, he is without doubt coming in into this race later uh, as opposed to when he was last race. He was really falling off. So made a few adjustments, I'd say, and took the notebook, maybe threw it a little bit away and you know, started a little bit new. But yeah, he's definitely catching him and uh, I'd say that within a couple of laps, he might be there, and we'll see maybe reenactment from the first race, and Macaulay will be there to see if anything happens between those two guys. And if Peterson can get to him, he at least appears at the moment to have that small advantage. It should give him an upper hand and maybe being able to use the outside of the racetrack to get around Cucker. This is what we saw in that first race. It happened originally when Cucker was leading this race. Christian Peterson went to the outside of the racetrack and passed him. He'll have to do it on a restart. Caution, a flag is out. It's issues on the front. Yeah, it's and Kyle Young is involved with this one and a couple other drivers as well. Second look, it'll be coming up in a minute. It's between the 93 and the 05, and it looked like a very similar accident to what we saw earlier with the same drivers involved. Young not necessarily given a whole lot of space up on the outside of the racetrack, and he, I guess the instance of fairness here, but at the end of the day, he got a very bad corner exit. This is exactly what happened to him a couple of laps ago when I noted John Ouellette was able to get around him, except this time he wasn't able to keep it off of the fence, and it was a very slight movement down the track again. I don't know if the 05 was banking on clearing him because it was really tight, and Young's going to get the penalty again because he bounced off of the fence in that one, but Scott Austin was right there in the second. That 93 moved down even in the slightest, hooked the 05 around in both of those cars involved. I think you just have to be wary of that at this point. We've had so many issues out of turn three tonight already that, you know, great if you want to go side by side, but I think it behooves everybody to try and give a little bit of room to anybody if they're on top of you for that very specific reason, to make sure that you don't get bounced into coming off the wall, because even though the other driver might get the EOL penalty for causing the caution, your car will be torn up in the process too, and then it won't quite drive the same way that it did to start the race. Now, Maybe there's the rare situation where damage to your car actually helps, but usually it hurts, and that's usually something you want to try and avoid. So I think they'd want to try and get cleanly through there as best they could. So that just, I think, adds to the pool of damage that has been, I think, rather indiscriminately assorted amongst the drivers in the field. A couple more cars get torn up. I think that they were already in a little bit of rough shape to begin with, but on top of that, now they get a little bit more, and I think the biggest thing to come out of every single time you see an incident like that is you've got somebody dropping to the back of the field uh, because of their, obviously, involvement in the incident. So, I said, and I think the key thing for Peterson was that I actually believe that he wanted green flag racing because it looked like he was quicker than Matt Cucker. This caution flag cycle is going to bring us right to about 10 laps to go, Coop, but I think that Peterson really needs a good restart to stay there. Yeah, he needs a good restart, and he needs to also try and pull away if he can get there. Uh, I think that's gonna be a, that's gonna be the biggest thing is if if he does get there, he can't let Matt Cucker get back to him because uh, it's been an eventful night as it is. I also want to mention that I I think that Kyle Barnes is trying to knock the toe back in his car because he's hitting the wall on the inside. It looks very intentional, uh, and that car is all sorts of destroyed. So 
Um, that double zero car, it, it looks like he's trying to knock the toe back in, so I, I don't think I've ever seen a driver do that before, but uh, try and make it so it turns better, I guess. Listen, if the TV doesn't work, you hit it. If the car is not turning, you hit it. I think it's all the same concept. We'll see if it works out as he tries to restart this in for the inside of Route 5 in P9. We look up front, though. Green flag flies. Ten laps to go from Concord into Super Late Models. Peterson can be really aggressive on the outside of the racetrack. Contact behind. Adams is spinning. Somehow, nobody else got caught up in that, and Adams kind of self-cleaned to the outside there once he got turned around, but he definitely got turned around after he got loose coming out of turn one there. Wasn't a lot of contact, but it was just enough for him to get in, or rather for the <laughs> 62 of Cody McCauley to get into him and just kind of finish him off. And I think maybe Scott Austin got a touch of damage to the right front, but for that wreck being as bad as it was and where it was in the field, it's a bit amazing that nobody else got caught up in that. And that's second time in a row in these cars where Cody McCauley has a fast car and just gets a little bit too aggressive. It makes a mistake. He came over the radio and took responsibility for that one. He'll get the end of the longest line of penalties. So the 62, who has had a very good night tonight, again, not going to get the results. And as bad as you want to feel for him, I think you really got to feel for the 89 Adams, who's the one who got taken out in this thing. Hit the wall so hard on the outside of the racetrack. I think there was a moment in which all four of those tires were off of the ground after making contact. The left front may have stayed down, but that was a solid hit to the back end. And I don't think driving into the fence under yellow is going to fix that machine. Jeremy Adams is done for the night. Yeah, he's already started to pack it up, and they're going to get ready for the uh, late models probably right after this. Uh, Cody McCauley, he'll go to the very end of the longest line of the lead lap cars, and once again, we'll do the dance, and I may think this will be the last restart we get on the night, and Matt Cucker versus Christian Peterson versus John Olette, and however way you want to slice it, these guys up front have been there basically the whole time, and Olette, he started second, and Really, he's been staying there the whole time. I think he's trying to look for an opportunity to get a win on the season. And then you're looking at these guys behind him, Inarelli and Austin as well. They may be able to slice something out here. I mean, this has been a wild night. These guys have been going at it. And, um, you know, we do have two guys that are trying to defend their uh, little jackpot up at the front. And then you've got a lot of other drivers behind them that are hungry for the big prize. I mean, it's a very large amount uh, they could win tonight. Yeah, if they do get it, but they do have two drivers up there that will battle um, themselves for the race prize and maybe in continuing on that bounty. And for all of the uncertainty and which has surrounded this race, I think, and specifically overall with all the yellows that we've seen, as I can promise you, this is going to be the final restart on the night. Pace car going to come by this time, take five laps to go. If the lights come out on top of the pace car, going to be four laps left to determine this thing. And if the history of this race, I think, specifically is an indication, Mike, I'm not sure we're making it all two miles of that. So it comes down to who gets the jump on the restart. And if Peterson can execute what he had a good shot at last time, I'm doing and that is keeping that car on the outside but really if you can stay there getting the job done in turn three and let's also not forget that cooker got the lead on a restart so how big would that be to jack it away from peterson solely off a restart and then hang on for the win Peterson to pass the 69 back on the outside earlier on tonight. The super late models once. Let's see if he can do it again. Green flag flies. Just four laps left to go. And Cocker is clear for the race lead. Here comes Peterson to the inside. Crossover and he will go two by two for the race win. Contact later back in the field, but it's up front where our eyes are at. And they oh. make contact. Peterson is going to get into him just a little bit, nudge him out of the way, and he's going to get the lead by a few car lengths. And you got to imagine if Cocker has anything to say about it, he'll get back up there and maybe spice things up. But I think he's just a little bit too far back. Two laps to go at the stripe. I don't know if he's going to be able to get to him. Guard length to go now from one to two at two laps to go. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to make up that distance. It looks like John Ouellette not going to be a factor for the win, but is able to jump up to third on this final restart. And Christian Peterson going to try to hold this one steady. Changed up the setup for something that they were more confident in. And after fading late in super late model feature number one, the 23 is at his best when it was the most important. He'll come at a turn number three checkered flag win number eight on the season well I, I almost said the cooker would have gotten it off of a restart because it was a very impressive restart a few restarts ago in which he got the lead in the first place but i i don't know 
where and how Christian Peterson got so much speed coming through turn one because the way Cooker got off, I thought he'd be fine. I thought he'd at least have a car length to work with coming out of that first corner, but Peterson found something going into turn one there and just absolutely drove away from everybody and everything and got underneath Cooker to make it happen. And then once you get the inside here at Concord, it's usually not too long before you get the next position in front of you. And for Peterson, that was on route to victory number oh goodness what are we on seven eight nine it, it feels like a lot to say the least but i think our technical answer here is eight if my math is correct and it also something that we can say is although the consecutive race win streak was broken coop by adams winning the first just happens to be that tonight's a double feature, so it is the eighth consecutive week of super late model racing in which Christian Peterson has gotten a win. And I said, he got one more opportunity, final restart. And as soon as that race was done, John Nolet, who came home in third, queued up on radio and asked Christian Peterson how he always manages. Doesn't matter what has happened in the opening 70 summer laps of a race, always, every single time. You come down to the final restart, he's in second, and he's somehow consistently able to get the little bit extra. Extra. I think everyone had the radios tuned into that one because I was listening into that too, and it's actually extremely uh, a really good compliment uh, that Olet has. Uh, I guess uh, that frustration of of having that, you know, he's he sees it, and I think all of us see that he's able to when it matters most. And you said at the very end of the race that it, when it really matters, he's able to, you know, he has a trump card just about every time, and. Um, these guys aren't really prepared for it whenever it comes down to the very end. So that's, uh, I think, it's a really good compliment on there on his part. Thrilling to fashion once more. We'll get his thoughts on it as we always do momentarily. First, as always, let's take a look top to bottom at your LSR TV full race results for tonight's second super late model feature on the evening. To Christian to Peterson started back in ninth position due to the invert that he gets the win with the pass with three laps left to go. He gives Matt Cucker a second place result to help out Peterson in the championship standings now with just two weeks left to go. John Alette, as we noted, had tip of the cap to him who had a great night on night long started second didn't give up a whole lot and came home in third spot big movers though to round out your top five mikey arelli picks up nine spots to go to fourth and it was plus nine as well for scott austin who comes home p5 Cody McCauley will finish in the sixth position. Tanner Cook, he finishes seventh. Kyle young finishes in that eighth position robbie bunden ninth and kyle barnes he'll finish tenth 11th will go to Brad Carpenter in the 31 machine. Brandon Wilkinson finished 12th on the evening. And then it was Kyle Leverant, 13th, Jeremy Adams, 14th, and Jacob Porter, 15th and final car in this field. Let's look top to bottom at your LSR TV full race results. Let's see if we can grab a word with the driver of the number 23 machine. He got a late bottle stock with on the night. Now he's got one in the super lates as well. Christian Peterson back in super late bottle victory lane. Christian, congratulations on that win. Before we talk about the final race restart, you guys said when we talked to you earlier that you were going to go back with a setup that you were more familiar with, a little bit less of an experiment and it looked like as opposed to the struggles that you guys had to weed your way through in that first one, that car was at its best late. Yeah, the thing was really good. Um, I actually came across uh, this this thing I got in there right now at Oxford, and it seemed to work um, almost everywhere I've gone. So uh, it's really stable, and it, it really you can just hug the bottom if you need to. You can put it anywhere you want. So um, it's not n nearly as quick as the other one was, you know, right at the beginning, but it definitely stays under you and you can push at the end. So that's what we're looking for. And um, I mean, hats off to Matt there. That was that was a brawl right there at the end. The restarts where my heart was pumping and everything was going crazy. And uh, just I thought I raced him a little bit and uh, he did just what he needed to do to try to beat me. But um, I just got the, got the advantage off four and uh, got the checkered. And we were hyping up the outside because that's where you guys traded off uh, positions up front a couple of times in that first race. And then he returned the favor by making that work late in this one. So we were talking to come into that final restart to watch you on the outside. And we were under the impression once Matt cleared you to turn one that that was it. And you were right there to cross him over. Was that the idea to kind of make him, I don't know, drive it a little bit harder to keep you on his outside and, and break early and go to the bottom? Or was that something that he beat you to turn one and that was your only option and you had to call a quick audible? Uh, well, the restart we had before that, 
I, I managed to stay on his outside. Um, although I did have a way better restart, um, I rolled into it a little better, and, and he went when I thought he was going to go. And the last one there, I thought I jumped it. I jumped it way before he went. You know, it's only like a fraction of a second, but it's huge on the on the you know on the gas pedal. So I jumped it, and then I let off, and he went. And then I was like, oh man, this is bad. And then he tried to. It looked like he tried to take my line away a little bit and won because he thought I was going to drive it in up so deep. And um, I was like, all right, I'll just take put it down there and see if we can make something work. And and and, uh, and it worked. So yeah, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, the the top was really the dominant place to be at the end, but we got it down there. Uh, we got it done down there on the bottom. Uh, being able to get the results in this one at, come the end of it, and, and even though that first one I know was not what you were looking for, it was still a solid result. This should make things nice and comfortable for you in the championship in the super lates going forward, and it uh, appears at least week in week out that you're having fun out there, and you and Matt uh, got to do it again in this one. It was an excited battle. The 23 ends up on top, so uh, we'll let you take off. We'll tip uh, a cap to you as well for doing another exciting job tonight. Anybody that uh, you want to say hi to, we got you down here in victory lane once more. Uh, just my parents downstairs. I think they're watching my girlfriend sitting here letting me do what I do on this thing. So that's a lot of fun. Um, Got to thank Kamikaze Webworks. He does the paint scheme. Um, Vincere Racing, I Analyze, all that stuff. Shout out to everybody on there. And um, hopefully we can, you know, keep this bounty alive and keep the win streak going for Vincere until the end of the season. So far, you have been able to successfully defend it amongst you and your teammates. So uh, congratulations on keeping that in the back pocket as well. But also congratulations on a win, Christian. It was another excited race. It was fun for us up top to watch it. Best of luck going forward as we start to get close to rounding out this championship. All right. Thanks, Evan. Hopefully I'll uh, see you here in the next uh, 75. That's right. We got one more coming up as we head back to the late model stocks. Christian Peterson looking to double up in those in their sets. A twin 75 lap main events. He will take to the track in those along with everybody else in just a moment. So as we said coming into tonight, it would be the longest night of racing all season long. We've got three races out of the way and just one checkered flag left to remain unclaimed. So we'll step aside one final time for the Concord Speedway and when we come back, late model stocks back on track for our final 75 laps this evening you're watching the championship esports association's cars esport tour at lsr tv your home for sim racing I sat in the car, you, know, you always wonder, what's it gonna feel like? You know, it was my first time driving a mid-engine GT car. You know, my thoughts were, wow, this is really good for a first time in a car. I was really surprised by it. You're sitting low, you got the A-pillars at steep angles, the windshields at steep angles. You can see the fender flares. I think we have a chance to win. Everything's gotta go right, but I think we have a car that can win the race or be on the podium. But can you imagine how cool that would be to, to go back 50 years later to the year and, and, uh, and do it?
So, so cool, yeah. Um, Nate, what are you working on at the moment? Uh, so I'm working on the animation for the game. Uh, we're working on getting pit crews fully developed, and that involves uh, a lot of moving parts. So I'm going in and making sure that each moving part can uh, dovetail smoothly into the next one, so that when you pull in for a pit stop, it, uh, it looks like the real thing, as opposed to a bunch of jumbled pieces that suddenly stop and then go and, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's so cool, but why aren't you working on the tire model? Nothing? We're back live from the Concord Speedway for our final feature race on the evening. It is the 10th week of this Cars Esport Tour presented by the Championship Esports Association. And we have seen Christian Peterson now take two wins in a row. Did not find a victory lane in the first of our super late model features. That broke a seven race consecutive win streak for him. Christian Peterson did go on to follow up that Jeremy Adams SLM win with a win in these late model stocks earlier tonight. And now after also winning a super late model event, Peterson looks to go three for four on the evening. Everybody else for sure going to want to prevent that as we welcome you back inside of the LSR TV booth. Evan Pasoko, Austin Coop, James Pike with you along with Cisco Scarabos downstairs. And guys, we work into our final race on the night. We saw a lot more of a attrition-filled second to go around with the super late models and curious to see if that's going to be the case as well in the late model stocks. Yeah, these guys have had plenty of time on this uh, on this track, and uh, I'll tell you that uh, these guys are probably learning a whole bunch about this track, especially on restarts. Uh, they've had a lot of them tonight, and uh, I'll say that this will. Uh, I think this last race will probably be. Um, they'll probably be a little more cleaner, I'd say, with the amount of cautions we've had in the second and third race. I'd say this fourth race does have a little bit. Uh, we'll have a little bit more to to grow on for the green flag last because of just how much that they have been racing, but that may not be the case. Drivers right now, as always, working through their last-minute warm-up session. Very shortly, we'll be headed trackside and take a look at the starting grid for this one. And again, as it was for that second of our Super Late Model races, there will be a top 10 invert based on the finishing positions from the first feature race. There is no separate qualifying session, so without getting into too much detail, again, we'll take a look fully top to bottom, Pike, once we get these cars on the racetrack and ready to rock and roll. But with that being said, it would be quite the challenge for Peterson to be able to get the win in these cars as well because that would put him way back at the bottom of the invert in 10th although he just won from 9th so nothing's impossible even in a short 75 lap sprint well just make sure that you stay out of trouble and don't get your car torn up which you know is a lot easier said than done but is possible if you play the right cards and have the right luck and i think that might be one thing that you're cheering for no matter who you are uh, maybe a little bit more than normal with the way the first late model stop race played out. And you just hope you don't end up the guy that comes behind the guy who comes off the jersey barriers out of turn three and bounces back into the field because that's probably the most surefire way to get your car torn up. There was plenty of torn up sheet metal in the second of the SLM races. Let's see how the late model stocks navigate it as we round out tonight's coverage of the Concord Speedway. Let's take a look top to bottom at your LSR TV starting grid. And this is how they will reorder themselves and get themselves lined back up correctly. Kyle Leverault is going to end up on a pole position for this race with Timothy Barnes, Kyle Barnes, being on the outside of that row. Nicholas Caldwell going to roll from third tonight with Jeremy Adams in a fourth position and Brandon Wilkinson, P5.
Continue to walk you guys through this one. It'll be uh, continuing throughout a Rico. We'll roll from the number six position. David Akello, Matt Conker, going to make up road number four. They will be seventh and eighth spot with Tanner Cook and Christian Peterson in ninth and tenth. 11th, where, uh, 11th is where Adam Rigo will start this race. Then Jacob Porter, 12th. David Kilo, 13th. Kyle Leverell, 14th. Robbie Bundon, 15th. And Trace Williams runs from the 16th position tonight. Looked at the bottom at your LSR TV starting grid. And again, those drivers getting reorganized now into that running order. A couple of names all the way at the back there that were not a part of the opening main event on the evening. So that will add a couple of names all the way to the back. But again, it is a top 10 invert in comparison to the first one that we saw. And that's what you see these drivers doing right now, getting themselves into the correct order. So Kyle Everalt, somebody who has had his fair share of rough luck tonight, going to come and take the lights off on top of the pace car and getting themselves to the green. We will see if he's able to really get back on track. He struggled in the first two races in each respective series. Didn't have a lot of fun, I don't think, in his opening late model stock race on the night. He's on pole. We know that he's got a fast car. If that team can get the handling dialed in, let's see if the 47 can make a play for the final checkered flag on hand for the night. Green flag flies. Let's go at it. 75 laps left in a late model stock feature race two. Kyle Leverell trying to hold on Kyle Barnes right down the outside line. And Kyle and him side by side. It looks like Barnes has the advantage going into three right here. And he goes up high next to the wall. Almost touches it right there, but Leverault, he'll have the bottom. He'll have the preferred line. So it's the Kyle and Kyle show towards the front. They try to run away with this one. The double of Barnes, though, not in a good spot. He's going to lose two spots with one swing of the bat as Adams and Wilkinson both going to go to his inside. Clear him. Barnes falls to fourth. Leverault, though, still able to work about a one-tenth of a second advantage. Caution to fly. Going to fly behind. Everybody scatters in turn one. Adam Rigo was on his side. I don't think he actually flipped, but another one of those incidents, the one of the, I guess, Scott Austin, Kyle Young type incidents where... Um, the three car of Jacob Porter was up by the wall and Rigo just kind of came into him and was almost on his side and then got the car corrected and collected, but not before he was run into by Brad Carpenter. And I believe the other one was the five of Tyler Simmons, who got a pretty good chunk of that 17 machine. And last time we saw two cars get together like that, they both ended up on their lid. So I think Adam Rigo is lucky that he was able to come back down on all four tires. Did get tagged by a couple of other cars, including the 31, once that thing did come back down to ground level. And it brings out a very early caution flag in this second late model stock made event. So that checks things up and we get sent to re-rack it once more. Jerry Adams, Brandon Wilkinson, fast moving off of the restart to second and third. Going to be a real threat for Leverault here. Yeah, Lev was able to hold him off for the time being, that being Kyle Barnes. And I think Barnes wasn't able to hold his... Uh, ground on the bottom just for the sheer fact that he had a lot of black flags to clear throughout the field but uh, Matt Adams he he was very strong last one and he did get the win by virtue of or wait, that was the first super late model race actually but um, he did you know get a win earlier tonight and so he's going to try and you know get another one before it's all over It'd be still pace, so I have an opportunity to kind of take a look as where everybody has been able to round themselves out through all of that. It's Kyle Barnes who had fallen back for the outside of the front row. He'll be fourth for this one. David Akello and uh, as well Tanner Cook back out of row three. Matt Cucker, Christian Peterson, I think are the two names that you have to be keeping an eye on who are... But uh, they're up to 7th and 8th now, so each of them got a spot, respectively. They've jumped up from row 5 to row 4 in just 5 laps. Key for them, I think, breaking into the top 5 early. There's no doubt they have the speed. Dispose it of traffic in a timely manner, I think, is the biggest thing working against them. And just trying to navigate your way through all these cars, because we've still got a decent amount of drivers on track, too. And we know track space is at a premium here. Base car off and away, get a 47, get out and in front of the 87, he's going to need all the help he can get, got a good jump the first time around, we'll see if he can do it again, green flag flies and absolutely caught off guard, a terrible restart for Leverall, he'll force it to the inside, tags Adams, and somehow the 89 doesn't take the foot out of the gas and takes over the race lead. 
Yeah, Leverant's going to get passed by two drivers before this lap's over. Barnes, Adams, and maybe more after that. He's going to get turned to the inside wall. Caution is out. The 47 and the 26 wedged together on the inside of fence. They're just now going to be able to get off of each other. And it was a aggressive move by Wilkinson. The 47 was slow. We knew that, obviously, because of the invert. Wilkinson made a move to the inside. And I think he was expecting the 47 to go high. They were only technically too wide that on 6 was not on Leverault's outside but I don't think Pike that 47 wanted to go to the outside not knowing if he was clear so he held the middle and I think the 27 drove it off to the quarter as if they were going to be two by two and it was very minor contact they didn't spin right away they just couldn't get off each other and drove straight into the fence couldn't get unhooked at all in that case and while all of that was going on kyle young ended up making contact with the 87 of robbie bundon and he went into the outside wall in turn one i think the damage on kyle's number 93 car was minimal but we had two separate incidents there it was i think technically speaking leverall that calls the yellow along with wilkinson but uh, had two more drivers caught up in a little bit of trouble there too and that's going to bring drivers involved down pit road to Wilkinson, headed down to Brad Carpenter as well. Those drivers are not allowed to come down pit road. And in fact, just to clarify, nobody's allowed to come down at the pit lane uh, to get fresh tires. But they are able to come down pit road for an assortment of other things, obviously, to get damage fixed up if you want to add fuel. Fuel was surprisingly an issue that we saw earlier on tonight. Uh, in one of our races with the driver of the three, a porter running out very late in the going. Ended up finishing more than a lap down by the time that race was done. I think he ended up about four laps shy. So it is important that you want to be able to make it that little bit of an extra distance and be able to get to the end. But I think that anytime somebody's involved in a wreck, especially if you are involved to the point where you have damage, but also get the EOL, you're going to be at the back of the pack. Anyhow, might as well come down, get any and all sheet metal that's been scrunched up a little bit, straightened out with a sledgehammer and get yourself back out there. So a couple of cars trickle down each and every time, but um, most importantly, I think race leaders really don't decide to come down to pit road in races like this. And those are the guys who we're keeping an eye on. Just to follow up on Peterson and Cocker, first restart, they were row five. The next time they were row four, they're up to row three, fifth and sixth respectively, continuing to march forward very early on. Yeah, I think this is to no surprise to, to anybody who's known these guys for as long as uh, the season's been around and uh, it's the seasons to come. You know, Peterson won the Super Late Model Championship last season, and he's uh, looking to do it this time. And in the late models this time, he's doing both double duty, and he's doing himself a good job. And then Kucker, he's also there. Um, he's been there every week up there towards the front. And so these guys have been doing a good job each and every week, and we'll see if they can get to the front. Adam Barnes, Kayla, and Cook. They've made up some significant progress. The drivers in front of them, though, all looking for trips to victory lane, which I think, with the exception of Adams, would be a first hit for each driver all season long. Better time than now. Green flag flies. Only working lot number 15. As we get off of our second caution on the night, Adams clear for the point. Barnes going to slide down into P2 as we fight for third. Cook on the inside of Kilo. Trying to find his way up through the field is Cook. Got a really good room there on the inside of Kilo to go get the third spot. So he's up there, and Robbie Bundy goes around to bring out the yellow out of turn one. I think Scott Naslin got a little bit of damage, as did Brad Carpenter, but Bundy the one going backwards here for a little bit, getting the car righted again. But his spin brings out another yellow here in this final feature of the night. And a very dejected sounding Scott Naslin came over the radio and took responsibility for that one after he got in a little bit up off of that yellow line. You could see there was still about a half a car length to three quarters on the inside of the 33 to that line. And that little bit of a high entry tag, the 87. And that's why you saw Bundon go spinning. And uh, he got finished off by the 31, although I think uh, just as innocent in that one was Brad Carpenter, who guessed high and got away relatively okay. A little bit of a kiss on the front end. I don't think that's necessarily going to tear up the 31 Chevrolet, but Carpenter 
is going to nonetheless get a little bit of damage in that one and run in the number nine. Spawned three cautions in the opening 20 laps, and this would means we will go to single file restart procedure for the next one coming up. That ruins Cocker and Peterson streak. Pick it up a lane each restart. They maintained P5 and 6. In fact, there were no major changes upside the top six. They are still the way they were five laps ago. Adams, Barnes, Cook, Killo, Cocker, and Peterson from the top to P6. Yeah, with this single file approach, I think this will, uh, what the intention, of course, is to, uh, to make it so that these guys can get a little bit more spread out and have less cautions. And uh, they'll still be able to race, you know, they'll still be able to, to race side by side. They'll just have to, you know, wait a couple laps to get to that point. You know, with these guys having the first few cautions in the first 15 laps, like Evan, you said, it's definitely, I think, a procedure that um, has been pulled out from the, uh, from the old deck of the, uh, old back of the woods uh, part of the rule book, but uh, it is in there. I'm, I'm very sure of it, and they are going to uh, going to do that, and it should uh, should make that so these guys have a little bit more breathing room towards the middle and back part of the field. And it also takes away the fight for the outside. Again, I don't think the outside's a preferred lane by any mean, but it's worked tonight. When you're single file now, you're already lined up in line and can kind of get an opportunity to dive to somebody's inside if you're not protecting down to turn number one. The accordion effect is going to be a lot more evident at a single file line. It's you know, instead of having doubled up five rows deep, we're single file ten rows deep. It acts just as it would if we were doubled up ten rows deep. When you have that many cars at a single file line with each other, there's just nobody on their inside. You're still going to have a significant delay between when the race leaders go and the guys behind them get going. So this is good news for the drivers up front because they're going to have an opportunity to get away from those fast cars that have been really tearing through the field on the two by two restarts. But on the flip side, it gives everybody more space and in turn gives those fast guys, especially if we get five to ten laps under our belt here without a yellow, the chance to really show the speed in their machines. And I have a feeling that we're going to see some drivers click off some really, really quick lap times. And when that happens, you know, two tenths after two tenths after two tenths a lap as we get the restart here, it might not be too long before we see some very quick drivers at the front of the field. Adams on the loud pedal and away barnes as well gone cooked to third pretty easily so the first pedal on track david kilo matt cooker and now christian peterson underneath the 27 trying to go grab the fifth spot and the arctic coolers machines do it about all he can up on the outside of the racetrack but it's just not going to stick against those drivers cocker going to move on through to p5 christian peterson going to move on up actually what's going to be fourth and fifth respectively so a lot of separation after kilo didn't get the best restart the top three though pretty tightly packed together it's still adams up front there was no change for position barnes p2 and a cook in third but they're all running pretty close to each other and if they start to fight amongst one each other and spitter in front of your leaders there's a lot of smoke to turn number one it's leveralt more issues for the 47 machine he is going to limp back to pit road no caution and we will stay green point i was going to make is that if those top three start fighting amongst themselves matt cocker is going to join the party that's not even required the 69 is there looking for third yeah, Leverall just got uh, a little bit loose off the three and hit the inside wall, and his car was already crabbing at it w as it was, so I was surprised it made as many laps as it did. And the fight for the lead is starting to get a little closer, lap by lap. Barnes is getting closer, but as that gets closer, so does the battle for third. Barnes, or should I say Cook, is uh, trying to hold off Matt Cocker here for third, and you've got Peterson looming in the distance as well. You can throw the top five a little bit under a blanket here as they're almost under a second total here on the front stretch going on lap 28. And maybe as we get to the middle portion of this race, have an opportunity to break out in some green flag action. That would work, I think, in favor of the likes of Cucker and Peterson, who I think have faster cars than the guys up front. Not necessarily the fastest laps at a racetrack the last time by. Jeremy Adams is no slouch. He won the opening super late model race on the night. Peterson then went on to take the late model stock event and then the subsequent super late model event. So we'll see if Adams can do just as Peterson has done, and that is win a race in both divisions tonight. But I have to say, the double O of Kyle Barnes is keeping him honest right there, step for step in second. He's right there, but the big battle might be for third at the moment because Matt Cooker is all over the rear bumper of the 96 of Tanner Cook. They come through one and 
Cucker's going to get a really good run through the dog leg, and that might set him up for a very, very interesting turn three. Now, he's going to run it high and see if he can pull the crossover coming out of three. Not there at the moment, but the 69 machine is coming, and he's bringing Christian Peterson in tow. And Peterson really hasn't had to make a lot of moves for himself. Not that he hasn't been tried, obviously, but he's been able to follow Cucker through the field. Cucker's the driver who got to the inside of Killa most recently. The 23 followed him through once that door was opened up. You have to think maybe Peterson letting the 69 do all of the aggressive work with the elbows up and wearing on the tires. That as he just kind of hangs out and follows him through, he might be able to conserve that car as the night goes on. He looked very good in these late model stock earlier tonight won that race trying to get a second of it on the evening no reason for us to doubt that he can't do it yeah and look at the bat oh looks like barnes got a little bit loose and so did the 69 everybody just got a little bit out of shape there in turn number three except for the leader and so that looked like christian peterson had an opportunity to take fourth away from cucker and he did not have the opportunity that time so very very close and that makes the uh, leader of jeremy adams have a little bit of breathing room and from the four behind him maybe are pretty close again and i think that howl has to do with the fact that barnes started catching adams and then cook started catching barnes and they all started kind of catching each other and then one mistake kind of led to another for these guys and a little bit of this the top five is a very skilled group right up here and uh just a little bit a little bit bobble and they'll get right back to it as you can definitely tell and you know, it's only a matter of time before he's got to really start to get going. I think they're kind of just, you know, biding their time at the moment. But I think Barnes may see an opening right here soon. If he can catch Adams and say it's, and he sees a little spot behind him, he may be able to try and go for it. And it looks like Adams has pulled just the slightest. And I'm talking about from two tenths of a second to three. That's maybe half a car length. Barnes, though, closes in that time after Adams tapped the wall into turn number three. The ED Don, though, was able to get a good run off and. Globalcom Chevrolet able to negate the mistake with a good run and maintain a couple of car lengths of an advantage, but the double O now starting to close in. Some laps oh, here and there, one's three. better than the other. We have a big, caution, turn three. Big, Cucker. big trouble. Matt Cucker was, I said he was all over the rear bumper of Tanner Cook, and then he actually got into Tanner Cook, and when he got into Tanner Cook coming out of the dog leg there, he shot Cook, in, or, yeah, shot Cook into the wall, and then Cook came down and bounced back down the track and ended up getting back into Cooker. So uh, I couldn't tell if the bump originally was on accident or whether or not it was just a difference in lines or something. Yeah, I don't think it, it didn't look intentional as I look back on it on the replay here and that you're seeing that uh, Cooker was just driving a different line and got through the corner a little bit better than Cook did. And that's what started all this mess. But more importantly, Cucker's got damage. Cook has got damage. And Christian Peterson got a little bit of damage as well because Cook came back down the track and clipped the 23 a little bit. So three of our front runners here uh, with a little bit dinged up race cars for the rest of this event. And Adams is the only one up there now that has the clean car. And that's why I liked what I could only assume Peter said was doing. It was staying behind Cocker because the 69 got a little bit loose. Coop, we saw him go to the inside. If he passed him, that would have been the 23 in that position and not Matt Cocker. But I don't know if Peterson just let him go or if he just wasn't able to win that fight and Cocker was able to hang on tight. The strategist that he likes to think that he let him go based on some sort of master plan. It could just be that the 69 got the better of him in that fight. But then Cocker stays in front. Cocker's the one that has to initiate the battles. I think it was trying to sneak to the inside of Cook coming off of that trioval on the back straightaway. The dog leg had made that slight bit of contact and Either way, it ends up with Cocker now basically out of this race after a huge hit. He's still in it back in 10th. I would be very surprised if that car is still competitive because he shunted the outside fence, flat impact on the outside wall, which is never good. But now, all of a sudden, you're Christian Peterson. You pick up a spot. You end up in fourth position. Arguably, the next closest car to you in speed is out of this race and six spots behind you. I think that's a win for the 23. I'd say so if he didn't get damage from it because he did get a little bit of right front damage from Tanner Cook in that one and uh, so that's definitely going to have to be uh, something he thinks about. The top two drivers, Adams and Barnes, I mean, they've been up front the whole race and really haven't had hardly any issues. Um, they haven't had, don't have any damage on their machines and the, then you've got Tanner Cook and uh, Peterson that now have damage on the machines so and then a lot of the other drivers do as well and that's something that those guys have to at least be careful with and 
I was gonna say I, I didn't see I saw the Calker got in the wall hard but it didn't look as hard as it could have been so I think uh, maybe the the 69 may have some life but I don't I think it'll be too late before he has anything to say about it lap 44 going on 45 with this restart Gonna be get doubled back up, close it in on 31 laps to go. Peterson on the outside of row two, keep an eye on him if he's ready to dance and play spoiler, but Adams and Barnes, their fight up front is gonna continue. Green flag flies as we go back at it with 44 laps behind us. Barnes trying to get cleared, not gonna happen, and you see the double on the outside of the racetrack now being able to force the issue. Watch Peterson though, the 23, trying to take third, and he will, away from Cook, slots to the inside and gets right to the bottom of Barnes and side by side for second. You know, it's kind of a three-way fight right now, right up front. Peterson wasting no time. Might see these drivers behind him going crazy because they're side by side back from about fifth and sixth. I think that might be Brandon Wilkinson and Matt Cucker going at it. So Cucker trying to make his way back through the field, but uh, it's, it just looks a little bit hairy back there at the moment. So if I'm Peterson, I'm trying as best I can to find a way around everybody. Meanwhile, Kyle Barnes just about oh. got loose and then he gets into the outside wall. So big, big damage probably for the Devils here. They're three wide at the moment in turn one. And yeah, uh, yeah, I'd say that's probably it for Barnes' shot at winning this race because that car looks like it's really torn up and he tried to save it in turn three as best he could and he nearly did. And then we have trouble because he slows down and backs up in front of Scott Naslin. Naslin gets into the wall hard. Don't think it's going to be a yellow flag, but uh, Naslin now with a lot of damage and smoke pouring out of the rear end of that 33 machine. So Barnes's troubles become Naslin's troubles, and that clears out two more spots at the front. And Jeremy Adams all the while is still leading, and Peterson is up to second. And after all of that, you got Barnes way down in 10th position, and Christian Peterson is going to make a play for the race lead this time by with 75 laps to go from Concord. He's on the back of the 89, and don't count down Tanner Cook. Cook may not have got the best cup of the lap trade off for the restart that allowed Peterson to pass him topside, but he is not slouching. He is right there in third as well in this three-way battle for the race lead from Concord. He's looking on the bumper, trying to get to the inside, and may have the positioning this time to the triumphal. No, Adams chops him off and shuts the door, not wanting to give it up. Now he's really, really close, and I'd say he's getting ever so close to every single lap. I don't think he's going to be able to get him this time by. He does the outside move. He's there again. He's done this before, and he's going to do it again. It's, it, that's kind of his trump card. That's what he's got here. In lap 53, he's going to get on the outside, and I'd say he's got the thing hooked up on the outside, and he's going to lead that lap so much power on the outside is what this 23 car has and wow i all oh, that's all i gotta say that move on the outside has made him get to the front so many times and he's done it again it's not the preferred lane it's not what somebody goes to first but peterson has been able to do it time after time and he will use it to get to the race lead on the outside of the 89 machine and he goes to the point coming up on 20 laps to go in this and i thought cook might have been able to kind of gang up on adams there as adams was trying to hold off peterson to maybe get to his inside as well wasn't able to and continues to sit in third but adams not giving up he's got a win tonight wants to match peterson with a win apiece at each both the super late models and the late model stocks look to the inside not much came of it but he's still sticking with it and keeping him honest i think they're the 23 better car out of the two just by a bit better car out of the two but he needs to be careful not to overdrive it because adams got to the rear bumper of the 23 that last time around only because peterson overdrove the entry into turn three and slid up the hill a little bit so oh and then there goes adams up the hill so he overdrives the exit of turn three and now he's on the outside and here comes tanner cook on the inside to go get the second position away from the 89 machine so everybody really trying to overdrive these cars and every final corner they can as they make a little bit of contact and there goes Adams into the wall and now Cucker has come back up to fourth and now could well go up into third as Adams has pancaked the wall twice in the last two laps we'll see if he can make it three for three when they come out of turn three or if that car is finally going to get woed up enough to get through the corner and that time it finally is clear for Adams so he does settle back into fourth but not without the damage to the right front corner of that car and maybe the right front suspension and I think more importantly the lost track position too because now Peterson's gone and it's Cook and, Cook and Cucker who are fighting for second and third.
Yeah, Cook is trying to cook something up from P2, but I think that nine tenths of a second back now, he was able to finally get P2 away. I think it's just taken a little bit too long to be able to get to that position. And I think Cucker may in the 69 machine have an opportunity to get up the P2, chasing him down. Surprisingly, that 69 looks good. Has picked up seven spots off of the restart, and he's about to get up to the 96. Not only that, but I think they're both catching Peterson actually just a little bit. And the thing is, is that if they do catch each other, then I'd say that that's kind of going to ruin all possibility for them to catch Peterson. If they fight here in the next couple laps, they don't really have much to, to go on him. They're going to have about 12 laps to go at the start finish line this time. But I'd, I'd say they're catching him pretty good. But I just don't think they're going to have enough time with the way they're going. Actually, they do lose time on him right there. And uh, Cucker probably will only be able to get second out of this unless a caution comes out. We'll have 11 laps to go this time. Closing down to the end of this one. A caution at five to go or less would end this race. So if Cook and or Cucker want an opportunity to get at anything late, they're going to need that to happen sooner than later. The battle for second is on, though. 69 looking high, looking low. We've seen this driver make it work on either side of the racetrack so far tonight. I'm sure he would prefer to get a good run off of the turn and just get to the inside of the 96. It's a lot easier with that positioning to muscle your way through. Took a dive that time in two to try to get there can't do it looks in turn three and locks it up but he's got it side by side for p2 dead even that time at the start finish line cocker preferred lane though now half a car length should clear him this time classic probe horn example from matt cucker to get around tanner cook and go grab the second position so now the question becomes what does cook do or does cook try and do anything at all and or can cooker run away from the 96 and solidify p2 don't think he'll have the time to get back to peterson unless we get a yellow flag very shortly but uh, after the way his night's gone and everything he's been through i think matt cooker would take a second place run out of this final race of the night Six to go next time by. Cook is still there. He can still challenge Conquer to maybe take back P2, but all of that costs them another second. It is Christian Peterson by two seconds out in front of the driver, second, third, or fourth. And kind of funny how Coop, we started the night off at the end of our first super late model race on the evening talking about how Christian Peterson had had a seven race win streak in that championship broken and since then he has gotten checker after checker after checker and yellow with four laps to go turned around is Jeremy Adams and that means Christian Peterson will get the extra checkered here and as uh, Adams gets spun around uh, I'm gonna see exactly what happened there and uh possibly the three Ooh. got involved in another mix up here so um yeah that was uh that was an interesting move in three but not, at the end of the day it looks like it's going to be christian peterson getting yet another checkered flag and i don't know if there was some history between the two of them but we had seen the three mid time tonight pike get aggressive going into turn three just kind of taking a look at that one though it didn't look like the most accidental of pieces of contact i don't know it might not have looked that way, but Porter was very quick to claim the yellow flag. So uh, I think he probably knew what had happened there. And uh, I'd say if you're quick to jump on it like that, you probably just uh, raced a little bit too hard. Well, I, I think if you anyway. turn right in the corner, too, you, you're aware of what happened, too. But I, I'm just thinking out loud here. I don't know. That, that would, I don't know. I'd have to look back because those guys have been around each other for a while. But I, I mean, he took, he took the penalty, so. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what happens. As long as you claim the caution, you're the cause of it. That's it. So then, well said. How, how about this <laughs> Christian Peterson kid, Evan? Pretty, pretty impressive runs tonight, I'd say, across both divisions. Not bad, not bad. Like I said, he, he came into tonight with a seven race win streak at a super late, but that's not only where he's found success as well. These late model stocks, he had came into tonight with two wins. He picked up again, I think, great redemption. So the only race in which he doesn't end up winning, Coop, is the one that they tried an experimental setup on. And when you have a lead as big as you do in the championship for that respective series, I think there's no reason for you not to try something. So not that he wasn't trying in the first one, but when Christian Peterson stuck to his guns, he was perfect tonight. Oh yeah, that's a. I think that's a very good point to make. It, you know, you guys are uh, 
I think it's something we just talked about all season. You know, it, it, it almost seems like we're beating a dead horse every race, but whenever he wins, you know, as often as he does, and it's not like the competition's not good. You know, the competition is good. He's just a step and maybe even a step and a half better than uh, a lot of these guys. And I think it doesn't always have to do with on-track talent because, I mean, you'll see that in the fixed series, uh, like the U-Car series, you know, he's involved in those as well, and he hasn't won every single one of those. And he hasn't won all, all the other ones, too, as he's about to get the green flag. But whenever it comes to the setup, these tracks, he's doing a very, very good job every single week. And it's, it's just impressive. And he collects the checkered flag. That is what's going to be total. A, I guess, total for this specific series with the late model stocks. It'll be his fourth win on the season, his second tonight alone. But if you want to look at the overarching 2017 campaign, it's week number 10. That is his 12th points pain win in this Car Z Sport Tour. He averages a win and then some on a week to week basis and not in these late model stocks he'll get a little bit more again to picks up a couple of points out of Cocker Cocker out the uh, night that he was looking for a, a third place result and then a second place result it could have been a lot better for him but Peter said it will close in the slightest it's not going to be enough I think to put a big sway in this championship pike but Christian Peterson in this series in which I think that those hopes of the championship are beginning to fade like he said when we chatted with him no more than an hour and a half ago coming out here to have fun I don't think there's anything that's not fun about winning races uh, fun to go out and be competitive in these races and run these tracks too because it's such a great schedule that this car's esport tour runs and you know, we got a few more races left on the schedule. That'll be a lot of fun that we get to here in a few weeks. But um, before we even bother with that, probably should go through our full field rundown and then talk to our winner, right? He's got it parked on the start finish line. He's waiting for us. So let's take a look for the final time tonight at the top to the bottom of the score. to pile on to Christian DePeters. It is your second late model stock winner on the night. Two for two in this division and three for four on the evening. Convincing to fashion over top of Matt Cocker as this one ends under the caution of flying. Tanner Cook coming home in third tonight. David Kello in fourth and Brandon Wilkinson. Another good result tonight for both the 27 and the 26 as uh, Wilkinson comes home P5. Finishing up in the sixth position, Kyle Young, and then Kyle Barnes finishes seventh. Tyler Simmons, he'll finish in the eighth position. Jeremy Adams finishes ninth and tenth. Finishes Jacob Porter. Eleventh is where you'll find the last car in the lead lap. That's Adam Rigo in the 17. Robbie Bunden finishes 12th in the 87 machine. 13th was the 33 of Scott Naslin. Brad Carpenter finishes in the 14th position. And then Kyle Leverault, the last car in the field, finishes 15th this evening. It's how they came home after 75 laps of action tonight for the Concord Speedway. We've gotten through both of our twin 75 lap main events. And as we seemingly do on a consistent basis, we are down with Christian Peterson in Cars Esport Tour Victory Lane. Christian for the third time tonight. Congratulations on a win. This one again, and very similar to what you had to deal with in the invert for that super late model race just prior. Found yourself in the middle of the pack and having to fight through it. You picked up uh, two positions per restart and the opening 10 laps of this race which i know help and then all of a sudden i think you were in sixth at the time the two guys in front of you would get out of this thing included matt cucker who I, I assume you were expected to be somebody that would challenge you in this one and at that point you were up to fourth were you pretty confident at that point in the race um yeah i, I knew starting in the back was going to be tough with uh with jeremy starting up front i know he's always quick um it's just depending on if he can get through traffic clean and and uh all that but him starting up front i knew he was gonna be able to get out there and, and get to the lead and, and that was gonna be tough to run down especially starting 10th or 9th or whatever it was but um we managed to avoid the few wrecks in front of us there was a one like pretty early on on the front stretch that we barely missed and uh got through that so that was good but yeah once we were up to fourth and and cucker was uh i think he was behind i don't know who it was i think it was I can't remember. It was Porter or somebody. They got into it, or or not Porter. It was Cook, and uh, they got into it. And I was just gonna try to buy my time and and wait for them to race it out. But that uh, that kind of opened the door for me to get to P4, and then that put me on a good position for the restart. So I was able to roll around Cook, uh, Cook, and um, 
Barnes got a little loose on the outside of Jeremy. That put me second, and then it was just trying to get to Jeremy's outside or, or trying to make him make a mistake to get the lead because I wasn't going to race him dirty or, or race him, you know, like any, you know, I don't know. I wasn't going to race him like I would, uh, not like my teammate. So um, I was going to give him all the room he needed and, and all that, and it came out good, and I just got to his outside. I cannot believe it stuck because <laughs> I was sliding through the, the dog leg there. What's the relationship with, the, you know, these cars at this racetrack for the inside and the outside? Because we see that if somebody gets forced up to the outside and it looks like that they kind of get pushed up there, they don't want to be up there. They sometimes lose two, three spots at a blink of an eye. But at the same time, if you can get to somebody's outside intentionally or as we saw a couple of times with you yourself and a handful of other drivers tonight, also just stick it on the top side for a restart. The outside works. How is that balance? Um. It all depends really on like how many cars you're around. Um, you know, if somebody overdrives the inside and you're on the outside and you got to wash up so they don't hit you or, or, uh, or something like that, you know, the outside can be treacherous on a restart depending on, you know, who's in front of you or who's next to you. But, um, when you're out there like racing and you're kind of spread out a little bit, um, this track is real. You just kind of got to make them lose their momentum a little bit. Um, because you can really roll around this track and make it real bigger than it is, kind of, you know, if you want to hug the yellow line. And, and you'll start to roll some speed, and it'll take a few laps, but you can get it going. So um, it's just trying to make people lose their momentum. That's I think that's the biggest thing on the outside is you could pinch them down, and, and they got to, you know, park center, and you can keep the throttle in it and maybe even get a little loose while they're pushing the front, you know. So you add to the resume what is a total 12th win in this series. And in these late model stocks, you double up your win total all season tonight. So it's clear that you're a fan of this Concord Speedway. Just look it out as we ended it up the night here uh, and wrapped up our fourth event. And you guys ended up with three wins, two races to go. Um, I guess two weeks to go, a couple of races with each of the respective series. But Myrtle Beach coming up next and South Boston, unlike tonight, which was a racetrack that we are returning to. Those are two tracks in which we have not raced in yet in this championship. How do those kind of fit into your style? And what's the expectations and the goals that you guys are going to be set and headed towards those uh myrtle beach is definitely a newer newer venue that we're going to here on the service so that should be fun i know we've done the myrtle beach simulation series a couple times here on lsr tv and all that with championship esports and and all that but um that track's interesting there's a bunch of different lines you can run you can run real tight on the bottom kind of like this track and and real real wide out there and keep the momentum going but um that's going to be interesting and then south boston that's a classic i mean it's tight it's a little boring and it's personally one of my favorites because it's flat and you can use the apron so um you know big arc and drive it off straight and we know that it'll be a little bit of extra time until we get to those with a couple of off weeks here in between races. Not going to be back at it until the 20th of September uh, for Myrtle Beach. And then this is wrap up uh, later on to the middle of October on the 18th from Sobo. But we know that we'll uh, be seeing plenty of you guys here on Wednesday evenings with the Championship Esports guys as the Myrtle Beach Simulation Series continues. But uh, focus tonight on the Cars Esports Tour. You guys were good as always. Three wins to wrap it up on tonight. Uh, so who do you want to say hi to and thanks for making all of that possible? Uh, just again, parents staying up late, watching, cheering me on, girlfriend still sitting here, uh, playing on her phone and all that. So um, just all those guys, everybody I've been seeing, Matt, everybody that I named off earlier, and uh, just Kyle Barnes, he puts on a good show, man. Um, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I hope to keep it going. I will say that very often we see you with a very fast car and it is never a dull moment when they stick it in the middle of the pack to get these things kinked off. And even with that being said, by the end of this, convince you to fashion. So Christian, as we say so often here, congratulations on the win. And uh, we are now through 10 weeks of this championship, only two to go. So we'll catch you back in a couple of weeks from Myrtle Beach. All right. Sounds good, Evan. Have a good night. The driver of the number 23 machine in these late model stocks, Christian Peterson, Christian Peterson, Christian Peterson. Three in a row to wrap up the evening to coop. Just impressive what he's able to do on a short track in general. We've seen him have success in many different forms here on LSR TV, on the plate tracks, on intermediate tracks, at a couple of different series.
Doesn't matter if it's Myrtle Beach, it doesn't matter if it's Cars Esport, this 23 machine knows how to get the job done and I think bounce it back after that fourth place finish to get off tonight. Again, worst finish tonight, P4. Matt Cucker had a very good night as well with a very similar average finish, but it's hard to overlook just what this 23 is doing. Yeah, wake in, wake out. It's uh, what he and the team have accomplished, uh, I think, in the end, which is why the bounty is on the entire team and not just him. And every single week we come back to uh, to this series, and you know, it's uh, you expect him to be up towards the front. That's how often he's been there um, in dominating fashion. And you know, we've even had the likes of uh, some of the pro guys come in and, and try and topple it. And this is his uh, his throne at this point. Uh, the series is you know that and that, i think that's what it, it comes down to is that he's got the experience the capability to drive behind the wheel and be confident with it um and i think that's the difference between him and anybody else is he's confident with this car and the tracks and I hope that you like the Myrtle Beach Speedway, James, because if you include the next stop on this Cars Esport Tour in a couple of weeks' time on the 20th of September, and then also all of the weeks of that Myrtle Beach Simulation Series in between, we're going to be racing at Myrtle Beach for the next six weeks in a row here on Wednesday nights at LSR TV and Die Racing Live. It's a place that we're well accustomed to, and for those who may not have been joining us for the other of the Championship Esports Association Series with that brand new Myrtle Beach simulation series you're going to be are given an opportunity to become quite acquainted with that joint over the next month and a half i think now we can finally confess that we knew about the myrtle beach state here on the schedule before uh things really even got announced so this one's been on my calendar for a while and i am super excited to get down there to the land of now, let's be honest, the Pavilion and Broadway at the Beach and Highway 17 and the Bass Pro Shops, the Tanger Outlets, the endless supply of beach homes and fantastic resorts and water parks and NASCAR speed parks, too. But most importantly, the Myrtle Beach Speedway, one of the most fantastic short tracks, not only in the southeast, but in the United States. And oh man i'm gonna have to bust out some sunny ledford all this week just to get myself in the mood because it's it's gonna be a fun 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 night when we get there for the next cars esport tour race night It'll be uh, six weeks of that right here on Wednesday nights. That's not the only time, though. You can find us right here on LSR TV and I Racing Live. That does wrap up our coverage for this week with the Super Speedway Cup Series being off. And then next week as well, the Real Super Racing Full Throttle Cup Series is off as well. But there are a lot of series coming to LSR TV. I can say that there are two series that are going to be here soon that we have not officially yet announced, so it's going to be packed to nearly seven days a week here in a month or two, so the place to find out all of those dates is a look at our extended broadcast schedule. You can find that online at livesibracing.com, but also make sure you're staying tuned to those announcements on our social media handles on Twitter, that is at LSR TV and on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com forward slash LSR TV official to make sure you're one of the first people to know when and where we announce those series and also uh, for some of them how you can be a part of them including this upcoming Sunday as our friends at the Drive for Suicide Prevention will be joining us once more until all of those races hit the live streams we are going to take this opportunity to say goodnight to from the Concord Speedway on behalf of the entire team at Live Sea Racing LLC for DJ Lion Laura Loss and everybody who makes it happen topside night in and night out and of course for the team tonight for myself Evan Pasoko for Austin Coop, James Pike, and Cisco Scaramusa. I want to thank you for tuning in and congratulate your race winners tonight, Jeremy Adams and Christian Peterson, who continues the onslaught of the Championship Esports Association. 12 wins in 10 weeks of this Cars Esport Tour. He'll be back here for the Myrtle Beach Speedway next Wednesday as our short track series action continues. And we hope to see you then as that race and every race can be found right here at LSR TV, your home for sim racing. Until next time, though, good night.